The following program is underwritten by the generous support of Associates of Glens Falls and Loomis and LaPan Insurance. Since 1852, they have been assisting both businesses and individuals across the country secure the most comprehensive insurance products available. Associates of Glens Falls and Loomis and LaPan are one of New York's largest independently owned insurance agencies. Public affairs programming on Look TV is underwritten by the generous support of Pennell's Restaurant, classic Italian American food since 1922, and Stored Tech, technology solutions for computers, networks, and phone. Stored Tech, your technology, our passion. 1922, Babe Ruth debuts with the Yankees. WGY signs on air. Exterminator wins the Saratoga Cup, and Pennell's Restaurant opens its doors for the very first time. For five generations, Pennell's has been preparing delicious Italian food, served in a comfortable, home-like setting where everyone is welcome. 90 years of authentic Italian recipes, 90 years of the freshest ingredients, and 90 years of the finest classic Italian dishes, all made daily by hand. Pennell's Italian Restaurant, a Saratoga dining tradition since 1922. Most cybersecurity firms deal only with prevention, the systems that block hackers and viruses. Stored Tech knows the root cause is actually good people doing bad things. So we offer a security training program which includes certifying all participants to show they understand the basics. Technology solutions for computers, networks, and phones. Stored Tech, your technology, our passion. Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order, and I would ask Supervisor Beatty to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, great. Hang on, let me get up. I pledge allegiance. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Conover? Here. Mr. Leggett? Here. Mr. Diamond? Here. Mr. McDevitt? Here. Ms. Bramer? Here. Mr. Bruno? Here. Mr. Driscoll? Here. Mrs. Frazier? Here. Mr. Simpson? Here. Ms. Hogan? Mr. Dickinson? Here. Mr. Molino? Here. Mr. Strauss? Here. Mr. Wild? Here. Mr. McGowan? Here. Ms. Seaver? Here. Mr. Beatty? Here. Ms. Shepler? Here. Mr. Garrity? Here. Chairman Thomas? Here. Uh, the first item on our agenda is uh, privilege of the floor uh, extended to uh, Congresswoman Elise Stefan. She lives. I think she and Betty took a powder. Yeah, I'm not sure that she's here yet. Uh, she uh, will probably be joining us in a, in a little bit. Uh, we'll skip to uh, Privilege of the floor extended to Senator Betty Little. She's switching computers right now. She had a problem with her computer. Okay. Uh, well, we have one more. <laughs> we'll extend privilege of the floor to uh, Assemblyman Dan Stack. All right. Well, hey, good morning, everybody. Um, I hope everyone's having a good week. Uh, I know this has been a, a long time since we've talked as a group. Uh, it's nice to see a lot of your smiling faces this morning. Um, this has been a real difficult uh, seven or eight weeks, I think, for everybody. And uh, I want to start by complimenting Warren County, um, both the elected, all the supervisors, and, uh, and certainly your staff uh, and your department heads for the effort that they've been putting in uh, these last couple months to react um, and asking all the right questions when you know the state wasn't in a position to give the answers yet. I think you guys have shown a lot of patience, but a lot of foresight as well, anticipating what's going to be needed um, so that uh, we can move forward safely and that everyone's healthy and that we don't break our, our medical system and at the same time preparing to uh, reopen an economy. I don't need to tell you guys, um, you know, where the, uh, the ebb and flow of your 
economy economy is um, from month to month. We're coming into the heart of it. And, uh, you know, I mean, everyone's always, you know, the criticism, well, you know, safety versus uh, versus uh, the economy. And are we chasing the dollar or, or say, well, you know what? Uh, poverty kills people, too. Um, you guys have uh, a lot of services to provide and that takes money. And thankfully, New York State can't print money. Um, if we could, uh, I, I can only imagine what it would look like. But you need a, you need a revenue in order to uh, to maintain the services that are desperately needed right now. Right now. So, um, you know, I, I appreciate, uh, you know, everyone trying to work together. Um, I know I think the, the question of the of the week last week was, you know, people were just coming to realize where these lines were drawn eight years ago for a different purpose for economic development. Um, as a practical matter and a political matter, I don't see, I, you know, I never saw the governor wanting to reinvent that wheel. Um, frankly, if he had time to spend on, uh, on coronavirus, uh, I'd rather him working towards addressing the issues of the day than trying to, you know, recreate and redraw lines. I mean, he could go crazy trying to redraw these lines. I understand that. So I, I never thought it would, uh, it was likely that he was going to change this. They had 10 regions established already. Um, what are you going to do? Create more and have 20 regions or are we going to have 62 different regions? So I, I think that, uh, you know, it was unlikely to change, but that still doesn't mean that um, valid arguments like the ones that you were laying out couldn't be made to say, hey, you know what, we're, we're, we have more in common with our neighboring region or we might be prepared more than the rest of our region. Classic example, a colleague of mine um, from Western New York, uh, Chautauqua County, 130,000 people. And when I spoke with him about two weeks ago, they had four confirmed coronavirus cases, four in a county of 130,000. But guess what? They're in the Western New York region. They're tied to Buffalo and they're not opening anytime soon. So there's a lot of these examples all over. Um, at the same time, we didn't want to damage or pull down our neighbors to the north. And frankly, um, our neighbors to the north weren't in a hurry to welcome your numbers into their calculations, as you can imagine. Um, so, uh, you know, the sub-region approach, I, I think, was the best way to try to strike a compromise there. Um, the governor basically rejected it. But I think the important thing was is to point out that there's nothing wrong with and when the time is appropriate, looking at a more granular level to some of these problems. Um, and now when you look at the map, there's literally a of New York, there's the capital region, and then down the Hudson River. So the rest of the state is uh, poised to start reopening. Um, so I think, as I told a few of you, uh, you know, a week or so ago, I think it's still good advice now. Just do everything you can to make sure that your numbers in Warren County that you can control are the best that they possibly can be. And they're not all in your control. Um, we have testing availability issues and, and things like that that we're still bird dogging. Another big issue um, is the uh, testing in the nursing homes. Uh, I think when all is said and done, there'll be a um, there'll be a reckoning on how the administration handled uh, nursing homes in general in the state. Uh, but I've been hearing a lot of calls lately from nursing homes saying it's going to cost me sixty thousand dollars a week to do these tests. I can't get the tests. Does it make sense to test? Everybody twice a week. What if somebody only works one day out of the week? You know, there, there's a lot, a lot of uh, these questions coming from the nursing homes. Assemblywoman Warner and I co-authored a letter to the governor a few days ago, basically asking him to take another look at the whole uh, testing criteria in, in nursing homes for those very reasons. Uh, you know, so these four o'clock calls that we're on every day, um, we throw a lot of information out there and it's, it's just slow. They're, it's like drinking from a fire hose. So I think the administration is doing what they can to keep up, but I, uh, I think that uh, it's frustrating because a lot of government, a lot of business people are, are looking for guidance and it's slow coming. We're gaining on it. Um, I know that uh, your administrator and, and Frank have been working hard to, uh, on the control uh, panel with um, the capital region. And I know that as of a couple of days ago, they thought you guys were getting close. It looks like uh, some of the numbers head the wrong way in the last couple of days, but Hopefully the capital region isn't going to be too far behind. And, when, and the last thing I want to just point out is when we do start to reopen, again, encourage positive peer pressure amongst the businesses and organizations, do everything they can to make this work, to give it a good, honest work, because if it goes south, um, it'll be very easy for the governor to say, I want to shut it down again. Uh, so we want to, you know, we, we want to make sure that we make the most of the opportunity when it comes to reopen. Uh, and do it safely and, uh, and get your economy going again. Or you're, as you guys, I know you guys are all in uh, panic mode, I'm sure about your budget as the towns are and as is every municipal uh, entity out there. So you're not alone. But um, anyways, thanks for having me on. I'll listen as long as I can today and uh, 
But thanks again for the work that each and every one of you are doing for your constituents. It matters. And go ahead and keep, uh, I know that uh, Supervisor Siever uh, reached out to me the other day. My office, and I know Senator Little's office as well, we're, we're handling uh, unemployment calls. They started to slow down this week. I'm not sure um, if, that, if that means that we're, we're actually turning a corner or not. But um, they can email my office or call my office, and we'll do what we can to, uh, to facilitate with DOL. We don't have a silver bullet, but you know, we can do what we can and, and try to keep the ball moving. So thanks, everybody. Thank you, Dan. Yeah. Okay, uh, we'll return to the uh, top of the agenda and uh, with Congresswoman uh, Elisa Stefanik, please. Thanks, Are Chairman. We? I'm good. Thank you so much for your patience as I joined and was led into the Zoom. Nice um, thank you. I want to echo what Dan said about the tremendous leadership we've seen at the local, uh, whether it's the county level or the town level. We're very appreciative of the line of communications we have had throughout this crisis. And I did see the very fulsome Warren County report that was put up with local organizations. I think that's really helpful as we communicate this challenge with the public. Um, today, I am in Washington. We are voting yeah. on a, uh, a partisan package that was not negotiated uh, across the aisle. So this will likely be almost a, a party line vote, unfortunately. But I want to talk about the path forward. So the priority for the path forward when it comes to the New York congressional delegation is providing direct aid to state and local governments. As I've had my working group listening sessions with counties across the district, that's the number one issue that has been raised by both county officials and our town supervisors. Uh, we understand from a federal perspective that these are unprecedented times and that direct aid is critical uh, in order for you to face the fiscal challenges and in order to ensure that the taxpayers are protected. Uh, again, there's been bipartisan support. This needs to be negotiated out and my top priority is making sure that rural counties get access to direct federal aid. In previous legislative packages, there's been a cutoff of you have to have a population above 500,000 individuals, whether you're a city or a county. In my district, that would mean that 12 counties would not qualify. We want to make sure no matter how rural of a community you are, you get access to that direct federal funds and that there's guardrails put up so it goes direct to the counties and it doesn't allow Albany to dip back in and take that back to the state budget. I wanted to talk a bit about Glenn's Hospital. Uh, Glens Falls Hospital. Uh, obviously, that is a key priority from uh, the entire community's perspective. I had a very good call earlier this week with Diane Chagru and the Deputy Secretary of Health and Human Services to try to address the fact that Glens Falls, uh, based upon the data and calculation that was used at HHS, was left out of the rural pot of funding. Uh, I've been proud to announce over $100 million of direct federal support from hospitals, but I have two hospitals in my district that we are working directly with to ensure that HHS understands their unique circumstances. The fact that Glens Falls Hospital has served COVID transfer patients, as well as the unique financial challenges that Glens Falls Hospital faces in a regular year, let alone an unprecedented year like this one when there has been a pause in elective surgery. So we are working at the highest levels of the Department of Health and Human Services, literally at the cabinet level to address the Glens Falls Hospital issue. In addition, I saw in the Warren County report, SUNY Adirondack, I have had conversations with Dr. Duffy of the importance of direct federal funds, not only to the state uh, and county government, but to our higher ed institutions. I've already announced over $30 million of direct funds to the colleges and universities, including the community colleges in the district, but we know that they will need more significant support moving forward, just given the budget cuts that they are facing. Uh, again, in my region, I have three different regional economic um, zones. I have the Mohawk Valley uh, with some of my central counties uh, who are affiliated with the capital region in the North Country. So we know there are three separate control groups, control rooms that are following the data. And uh, we continue to work with each of you to ensure that we can safely reopen as quickly as possible and meet the metrics. Uh, uh, my office is teleworking. We are available 24 seven, seven, as I said, seven days a week. And uh, we will continue to take all incoming and partner with our state and local officials to address any concerns. With that, I yield back Chairman Thomas. Thank you. Uh, any questions for the, the Congresswoman? Anyone? I have one if you'll let me, Chairman Thomas. Yes, uh, Supervisor Bramer. 
Thank you so much, Chairman. Congresswoman Stefanik, thanks again for coming and joining us. Um, I'd like to get your uh, thoughts on the possibility or chances of a bipartisan uh, package for direct aid to our state and local municipalities and covering rural communities. And will that cover our lower and higher education, uh, our schools? It's a great question, Claudia. So we have to have a bipartisan package. It's not a question. It needs to get done. I think the reality is this will take another few weeks. I'm hopeful that we will pass a bipartisan package by the end of May. Uh, there are talks that are going on currently, both on the House and Senate side that I'm a part of, uh, for bipartisan provisions to ensure that any funding that goes to counties does not have that population cut off and is calculated in a way so that our region will be represented to understand the financial shortfalls and the economic challenges we are facing. In addition, I think when we're talking about direct aid, to New York State, we have to put up those guardrails to ensure that the funding goes, whether through K through 12 or to our SUNY institutions who are facing dire situations. I've had calls with our local BOCES, with superintendents across the district, and we know that they have met this challenge head on. We need to make sure that the federal government steps up. So I, I'm hopeful that by the end of May, we're moving in the right direction. But as you know, we're in divided government right now. We have a, a Democratic <laughs> Republican Senate and a Republican administration, I think that there, this is a great opportunity to come together and deliver, as we have in the first three CARES packages related to COVID, a real bipartisan solution that ensures that rural parts of this country are represented. All right, good luck, thank you. All right. Supervisor B. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, a, a big concern of mine, I think you've addressed part of it at least, is the fact that the money goes directly to the counties, uh, a, a good portion of that, because in all frankness, a lot of times when it goes through the state, the state takes, a, you know, almost their cut right off the money that's intended for counties. So I have a, re I remember when I was in DC a month ago, the four, uh, the four Trump officials that were in that meeting with uh, Supervisor Seaver and myself, uh, that was a big concern across the state of New York that monies go directly to the counties and not to the state. And then the state takes a cut and then divvies it up to the county. So that's a big concern for me. Uh, and I think for a lot of other officials. Yes, it's a big concern for all of us across the New York delegation. Uh -huh. Again, there's bipartisan voices and we've really worked together to ensure that the funding does go directly to the counties because we know that the county public health offices and the counties in general have really borne the brunt of this crisis and have really risen to the occasion. So that direct funding, that's why I talk about those guardrails to make sure that when we're talking about state and local aid, that we can direct it as much as possible to the counties. And I also think it's important to note that to date, we have sent $9 billion of aid to New York State. I know oftentimes it gets portrayed uh, inaccurately with zero, that's not the, faith, the fact. I've sent over $9 billion to New York State. And that's on top of the direct federal funds that have gone to the hospitals and to the higher ed institutions, housing programs and other uh, priorities that we've announced. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Uh, anyone else have a question? Uh, if not, I would like to uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, I, I appreciate all your work and uh, good luck in Washington. Thanks, Frank. We'll stay in touch and I'll, I'll stay on until I have to jump to Washington County. Okay, thank you. Uh, now we do have uh, uh, Senator Elizabeth Little with us. Uh, Senator, how are you? Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I want to congratulate Elise, uh, not only on the hard work she has put into this program, but on her ranking for being one of the top bipartisan representatives in Congress, because that's how you get things done. And um, congratulations to you for that, Elise, and all the work you're doing. But um, yeah, there's a lot of concerns, that's for sure. As far as the regional economic development ones, we are in the capital district because people who do not work in Warren and Washington County, but live here, they usually work by going south and we're related to that in that economic way. Um, 
the, the North Country too, by the way, is large. It's from Lake Ontario to Lake Champlain. So I think we're well suited in the Capital District. However, they are working on the figures for Albany Med, trying to figure it's a much larger hospital and some of the same numbers that we see um, put on hospitals every place else really don't apply to big urban areas. So I am hopeful. Um, Patrick Murphy is in charge of our regional group and uh, he's working very hard on that. So in regard to the nursing homes that was spoken about, the, the idea of having to test staff and patients twice a week is impossible. And it would take away from all the care they're giving to the patients. And if you want to look at nursing homes, it's a congregate setting. It's like living in a family home. And because once it gets in there and they have all these people coming in, staff people, even though they test them for temperatures, they've been doing that now for weeks, um, somehow it still got into some of our nursing homes. And that's really difficult. So, but if they had more money, they would have been able to provide single rooms and more staff and everything else. And they, their Medicaid reimbursement rate, as we know, does not cover the patients. So can't be too critical, can't be critical of them. The work they're doing is actual yeoman's work, very, very hard work. And, you know, pay scale isn't what it ought to be either there. So working on that and trying to get away from that. But the testing, if you don't, use a lot of your test kits, you're not gonna get a lot more. So the more they test, I know Hudson Headwaters is offering testing to anyone that wants to call and make an appointment. Um, the county at, with Glens Falls Hospital at the Warren Center, Warren County Municipal Center is doing a great job with testing there. And, and we're having some private places being able to get test kits and be able to do them too. So the more we do, the more test kits we'll get, but keep in mind the numbers will go up the, on the positive cases. And actually no place do they distinguish between those who test positive and have no symptoms and those who test positive and are symptomatic. Um, so the uh, other tests that they do afterwards to see if you have some immunity, um, those are important tests too. But keep up the good work. Um, I am stressed. I don't know how we're coming out of this financially or economically. Our business is hurting. Our unemployment, people are starting to get to the finish line, but so many people are not there. But 1.8 million people have applied for unemployment over the normal number of like several hundred thousand people. So. Um, the commissioner, Roberta Reardon, I've talked to her and, you know, believe me, she is doing the best she can do. This is unheard of. The system they had was being replaced. It crashed. Google came in. That crashed, too. We just keep trying to tell people that they will get their money. Um, that It's mostly the people who are in the pandemic unemployment care category because they were never eligible for unemployment before. And theirs was a two-step process in the beginning. They finally combined that into a one-step process. But, and then they have 3,000 people working on it, but probably only 1,000 people are actually working in the labor department and actually you know, familiar with all the issues that are here. So it, it's gotta be fixed. We have to continue to um, pound on this and we have. So as soon as that is done, that will help. But I know so many businesses having a hard time. I'm glad, you know, th the one thing I worry about and one of the doctors at Saratoga Hospital brought it up on a call, they had people die because they didn't go in for testing and they couldn't get in for testing. So getting that elective surgery was very important, but there are still people that don't wanna go to the hospital for a test. They would rather put it off. So we did get ambulatory surgery up and running now. And the other thing that we're going to be faced with is for the summer. I mean, what do we expect kids to do this summer? If we close off the beaches and the programs, they're gonna go find some place to swim and there won't be lifeguards and we'll have tragedies taking place. So we have to figure out the new norm, how to do the distance 
social distancing and all, wearing masks, if we all wear masks, encourage people to wear masks, don't get within six feet of each, anybody else if you don't have a mask on. But it's, it's very serious and help our business do it. I think the worst thing that could happen is if we opened up and then had to close again. So I'm hoping and praying that doesn't happen. But the point is we don't have to wait two weeks for the end of this two week session, um, you know, till what is it, June 1st or May 29th. So um, the other thing, I don't know if it was a rumor down here, but um, Docs has extended their no visitation at the prison system. So that's still ongoing, but thank you for all you're doing. These are tough times and um, wow, nobody expected this. So uh, we're all flying it, but uh, I appreciate all your help and all the work that you do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions for uh, any of our legislators? I think they're all, all three are still here. Uh, Supervisor Connell. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I, I, I have a, more just a, a, a comment. I think I'd be remiss if I didn't say what I think everybody already knows, which is that uh, up here, our uh, the next uh, 10 weeks uh, is 80% uh, of our economy. And, uh, and so, you know, as we move um, toward Memorial Day, uh, the, um, uh, the impact uh, begins to be very, very significant. So <clears throat> I know it may sound a little narrow in, in my comment, but uh, anything that can be done, marinas are, are, are permitted, uh, but they can't do boat rentals. Uh, if, we could find a way by, if we could find a way by reservation, I spoke to the Senator and the Assemblyman about this, but if we could find some way by reservation perhaps to do boat rentals, that's a huge part of our uh, marina economy, uh, not just for Bolton and Lake George, but for the whole of the Adirondacks. Uh, that would be one item. And the other item would be on the restaurants. And I understand the challenges associated with that. Uh, our, our business community has been very creative, uh, converting to car hop type situations and even boat hop type situations, which is a, a very interesting uh, approach as well. But uh, if we could find a, a way of, uh, for example, many of them are, have the ability to set up outdoors, uh, perhaps set up outdoors with certain types of protections, uh, as opposed to indoors, anything like that, that would help our restaurateurs um, get through uh, the next 10 weeks uh, yeah. would be really uh, appreciated. Now, naturally, I, we all understand that has to be balanced against the, um, the pandemic and the risks, but... Um, so the more we can be um, uh, creative, uh, uh, or the more we can entertain creative ideas uh, from our business community, uh, I think that uh, all of that will help us get through this. And so and I would like to thank all three of you, Congresswoman, Assemblyman, and Senator. Uh, you have been just so engaged on this, and um, thank you. Senator Little. OK, can I just add, uh, Frank, one thing? Yes. On the call we had yesterday, um, we were told that they're looking at more clarification under the recreation area. Like if you can go hunting, why can't you go to a gun range? And that's not even being thought about. So we're pushing that one and you can play tennis, but you know, the rentals for the boats, the golf, it's nice if you have a handicap sticker on your car, you can then ride in a electric wagon but how about people over 70, 75 that can't walk 18 holes? So, and you have to get driving ranges open and all of that. We've really got to start with the initial steps. And if we get more clarification on the recreation that may help us right now, but I agree We're, you know, this is our big time of year and uh, the drop in sales tax is absolutely horrendous. And I went by the outlets yesterday, Not didn't stop any place, went for ice cream, that was it. But no, they're all closed. I mean, we're, we are losing, um, we are losing, losing. And so are the businesses. So um, hopefully we move on, but thank you very much. I do have to get off. I have another, another Zoom call, so. Okay, thank you very much for your time and your help. Thank you. Uh, Supervisor Sieber, I believe, had a question. 
That's okay, Mr. Chairman. It was actually um, addressed more to Senator Little, and I know she had I'm to. I'm still here. Um, I'm still oh. here. Hi, Betty. Thank you. I just, I think Supervisor Conover touched a little bit on it with the recreation concerns. And I know this morning I had a call from a couple of people regarding baseball, you know, in Warren County for kids and, you know, what the summer is going to look like and their frustration. Um, and I appreciate all of the calls that you guys are fielding, both on the unemployment front um, and that direct assistance, but also I know to many members of our community that are really concerned about the recreation piece. Um, so I, it's my understanding they were going to, you know, tie in later on YouTube, but while you were still here, I just wondered if you could address the recreation aspect for our kids or, or what that advocacy effort looks like at the state for the summer. We have to have something. If we don't have swimming beaches available, they're going to find a place to swim and not everyone has a pool in their backyard and yet they can all be open and pool stores are opening to maintain pools and all. Um, we cannot avoid it. Um, and they haven't had any school. I wanted them desperately to go back to school just so they got grounded in their school year. No face-to-face -face with your teacher since March. Uh, the teachers themselves put into this online thing when they were never really totally prepared for it. They had a little bit of online, but that was not a professional development area that they were working on. So the kids have to be stressed out. I have two high school graduates. I have college kids who are home and, and elementary kids who are working so hard on, on just trying to figure out what's going on. So now they have the summer and they're going into a new grade in the fall and they've got to have programs in the summer. I'm just hoping, you know, even if a beach opens for a morning session and an afternoon session, they stop in between, clean the beach, clean the bathrooms, do all that they can do to, you know, protect the area. And, um, you know, maybe people have to reserve or say they could go so many days or something like that. I don't know how each town can work on it, but we can spread out. They have to learn how to do it. This is, you know, we're not going back to the, the huggy, you know, shake hands, all that kind of stuff, hang out together immediately. So definitely needs help. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Chair, did you have a question? I did. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm not sure if the Congresswoman is still on, but my question was uh, direct, was going to be directed to her. Um, Congresswoman, are you still there? Okay. I'll uh, attempt to reach out to your office and ask my question. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you, Senator Little. Uh, let's see. Uh, next item is we need a motion to approve the minutes from uh, April 17th. Moved by Supervisor McDivitt, uh, seconded by Supervisor McGowan. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Uh, carried. Uh, next we have Jim Lieberum from the uh, He's the district manager at the Warren, at Warren County uh, Soil and Water Conservation District. And uh, he's coming before the board today uh, relative uh, to closing the public comment period for the draft 2019 through 2020 MS4 report. Jim? Yeah, please. Hello, everybody. Uh, the end of the public review and comment period for the draft 2019 Warren County Municipal Storm Sewer System Annual Report. I'm sure it's something that all of you look forward to seeing me this time of year. Uh, it's only relative to uh, county facilities uh, and infrastructure within uh, urbanized areas designated by the, the Census and the New York State uh, Department of Environmental Conservation. So, not all communities are part of this, and not all parts of the county infrastructure are included in this. Uh, your, your, your plan includes any county structure or facility in the town of Lake George, village of Lake George, town of Queensbury, city of Lansfall. So, 
Uh, this was publicly announced for review at the Warren County Department of Public Works Committee meeting hosted on the Zoom on April 21st. It's been available uh, online at our website and the county website since then. We've received no comments in regards to the report. Uh, the annual report is a summary of the reviews of the goals and activities outlined in the stormwater management plan. The stormwater management plan and all the maps relative to the program are available at the county website and at our website as well. Upon finalization, this report will be provided to the county and the district at the websites and our copy at the district BPW and at the clerk's office here at the county. If you'd like more information on the program, please visit our, our website, www.warrenswcd.org. The county has a website as well. I don't have it listed here, but simply go to the resident section. It's under the resident section. All past reports are there, so you can look through that if you would uh, like to. Uh, I would encourage residents to review and uh, take a look to see what's going on out there. Uh, it's uh, something to do better on each year. The communities that I mentioned, Town Lake George, Village Lake George, Town Lake George, and City of Falls have their own MS4 programs that they have to account for. And uh, it's something you're supposed to improve on. But we generally work with all the communities now in some form, and uh, it's, it's a good program. So uh, this report, once approved, will be submitted to the New York State DEC by June 1st. I don't know if anybody has any questions about the report or the stormwater in general, but. Okay, do uh, you want to have any questions? Well, that's a I don't see any, Jim. <laughs> I'll just assume I answered all your questions. <laughs> okay, uh, very good. Uh, now, does the board have to approve this? They do. Okay, do we have a resolution? Make a motion. Make a motion. Okay, I, I need a motion to uh, approve the MS4 report. Moved by Supervisor. I'll make that motion. Uh, seconded by Supervisor Stroud. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Very good. There you go. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. We'll see you next year for this. <laughs> okay. Have a good day. Uh, Next, we have Dr. James Seeley, Executive Director of Cornell Cooperative Extension, uh, to address the board regarding the 50th anniversary of Arbor Day and the President's Volunteer Service Award given to Jack Sweet. Good morning. Can everyone hear me? Yep, I don't believe so. Well, thank you, Chairman Thomas and supervisors for this opportunity to recognize an outstanding young person. Jack Sweet of Meadowbrook Road in Queensbury. He's a 4-H'er. He's in the eighth grade at Glens Falls City School District. Jack saw a video when he was in second grade that inspired him to help his community. His idea, Pennies for Pink, Everyone Has a Penny, grew from $50 to $400 in its first year and then began expanding to other schools. Each year it has grown and in seven years, He's raised over $22,000. It all goes to the Glens Falls Hospital Foundation who purchases gas cards for people who need to travel there for treatments. His mission, let the community know we have their backs. So far, 830 gift cards have been distributed to these survivors. Jack has been a News Channel 13 Kids Who Care and has been featured in the Post Star Channels 10 and 13. It is with great pleasure we award the President's Volunteer Service Award to Jack Sweet, along with a letter from the President accompanying it. Please join me in congratulating Jack and his family. The award, Jack. Very good, that's excellent. Can I say anything? <laughs> the other, uh, any comments from anyone? Thank you, thank you very much, Dr. Seeley. Okay, I, I'd like to turn it over to John Bow, our 4-H 
uh, team coordinator who has a little presentation regarding the 50th Arbor Day. Sure. There you go. <laughs> How are you all today? Good. So the 50th Arbor Day on, or, and Earth Day actually uh, was celebrated in April. Unfortunately, we couldn't make it down to join you. Uh, but today, starting uh, at about 11, these hemlock seedlings will be available for each of you. They'll be at the DMV check-in station. And essentially we wanted to celebrate the 50th anniversary because we feel it's a key time. This was before COVID when we started planning this, but essentially it's also a good symbol of, hey, as much as we know about nature, nature still can bring our society and essentially our government to its knees at least temporarily. So these trees will be a nice symbol of this year and a new start. So hopefully you'll enjoy them. Remember that soil and water, Jim Liebram, who was just here, uh, they have a Hemlock Willia Delgid monitoring program. So I encourage you to go online and check it out. There'll be information about that on our letter with the trees. Thank you. Thank you, John. Welcome. Uh, anything else for us, uh, Dr. Sealy? That's it for today. Thank you for all the great work you are doing. Thank you. Uh, next on the uh, agenda is a report by the chairman. Uh, <coughs> I'll try to keep it rather brief. Uh, I believe I attended nearly all of the uh, past committee meetings in the last month. I think I did maybe miss uh, parts of one or two. Uh, I attended four meetings of the Economic Recovery Recovery Group uh, that evolved into the Economic Recovery Recovery Partnership. Uh, I would like to thank Supervisor Wild for his uh, his pulling this group together and, and his leadership. I'd also like to thank the, uh, the people that have participated uh, in the report that has been generated. Uh, our county administrator, uh, Mr. Biddle with the ARCC, uh, and Bartholomew with EDC, Dr. Duffy, uh, Mark Yarish, I believe, from uh, Arrow Financial. Uh, I know I'm going to be somebody else. Uh, Frank, Frank Dietrich from uh, the Tourism side of uh, our economy. And uh, I'd just like to thank all of it. Uh, Lisa, uh, or Liza from uh, ET, from Employment and Training. Uh, they put together an excellent snapshot of, of, of where we are with the help of uh, our companies. And uh, uh, I have a copy of it right here. I haven't read all of it, but it, I've read parts of it. Uh, hope to read it all this weekend. But I would just like to say thank you, and uh, they done a, they have done an excellent, I think, an excellent job. I uh, participated in the NISAC uh, telephone conferences. Uh, they've, they've been calling weekly on Thursdays. I did miss, uh, I believe, April 23rd. Uh, on the 30th, uh, Comptroller DiNapoli was, uh, was a guest. Uh, he talked about the retirement system. Uh, he gave, while he never really gave a straight answer, uh, he did indicate he, uh, that the contribution rate would probably tick up, but not, not as much as we might think that it would. Uh, he's thinking the one to two percent. I hope he's right. Uh, on the 7th of May, Judge Lewis Max, the chief administrative judge for the state, uh, was a guest. Uh, explaining uh, changes that are going to uh, be taking place in, uh, in the courts, local courts and Supreme Courts, surrogate courts. Uh, and there's some areas they haven't figured out what they're going to do yet. Uh, last evening, uh, Attorney General uh, Letitia James was to be a guest, but she, uh, she was unable to make it. Uh, she, she will be back next week. 
Uh, there's a lot of good information on these uh, on these calls. Uh, I can say in certain certain regions of the state, uh, the people are getting uh, uptight and restless. They're they're uh, they're talking about going rogue to some of the counties. So uh, anyhow, uh, on May sixth, uh, we reviewed uh, the administrator's austerity plan and uh, the the suggestions from the uh, department heads. That was myself. Uh, the county administrator, the budget officer, and the vice chair, Edna. And uh, we think we have identified about $5 million in, uh, in reductions in uh, savings. Uh, we don't really want to put that all out to everybody until <clears throat> until we have more information of, of where we're going. Uh, uh, we all see our sales tax declining fast, fast and uh, but we still haven't gotten... Uh, any indication of what the amount of budget cuts from the state will be. Uh, last night, uh, they indicated anywhere from 25 to 30 percent. So, until we get that, then the, you know, then we can take some. We'll have to take solid actions. Uh, let's see. Last Friday on the eighth, I was there for part of the occupancy tax uh, committee meeting. Uh, and I attended a, uh, a Zoom meeting with Senator Little, uh, Assemblyman Steck, and uh, Assemblyman Jones, uh, the North Country, uh, some of the North Country leaders, the public health directors, and the Chambers of Commerce. Uh, we just there was discussion about opening up and uh, nursing homes and uh, economic recovery. After that, uh, we had a first. Uh, COVID task force meeting to uh, discuss reopening the county, uh, whether it would, and how. Uh, that's going to be a process, I think. Uh, it's going to be a phased, a phased uh, type thing. Uh, some people are, can work at home. Uh, we have to do signage, adjust workplaces, et cetera. So, uh, however, uh, Executive Order 202.28 does extend uh, the 50% essential workers uh, till uh, June 7th. Uh, so really nothing has, uh, has changed. Uh, but, it, but it won't hurt the plan. It's going to take a plan to uh, make it happen. Uh, after that, I had a Skype meeting with the eight uh, chief electeds from the Capital District. Albany County and I believe Schenectady and Rensselaer had put together a uh, capital region going forward uh, plan. Uh, we talked about that. I talked about uh, our economic recovery uh, report. Uh, they emailed that this a draft of the plan up. Uh, in order to move things forward, I, I did sign on to that. If I didn't see any, any hurt in doing that. Uh, I'm not really sure the state's all that interested. Uh, maybe they are. I'm sure they'll read it, but I don't. Uh, the governor is, uh, wants to do this by regions. So uh, individual reports, I'm not sure how much weight they're going to carry. Uh, a couple more things. Uh, I want to remind everybody to, uh, if they haven't completed the census, to it's still available and make sure that you do complete it. I see our numbers have uh, ticked up some, but they need to tick up quite a lot more. Uh, so please, please fill out the census. Uh, I signed on to uh, a few letters, also uh, wrote a couple. Uh, on the 21st, well, on the 16th, I signed in to a letter uh, to Senator Schumer, Gillibrand, and Gillibrand, uh, and Congresswoman Stefanik. Uh, this was from myself, uh, Mike Biddle with the ARCC and Ed Bartholomew. And that was to uh, request a second round of PPP funding, uh, increase or change the Medicaid formula for the New York, New York hospitals, uh, local government aid, and the J-1 visa program. On the 21st, I, uh, with the help of uh, Supervisor uh, Bramer, 
I wrote a letter to uh, the FCC chairman, Ajit Pai, is his name, and I filed that online. Uh, on the 21st was the last day to, uh, to make comments, and this was to do with uh, uh, opposition to uh, Charter Communications request for a waiver uh, through the Rural Digital, Digital Opportunity Fund. And it was to exclude 2,400 census blocks in phase one of the uh, Rural Digital Opportunity Fund auction. And some of these census blocks cover rural Warren County and it will ultimately leave residents unserved if, if they were to get this waiver. Uh, on the 24th, I uh, also signed a letter uh, from the AR, ARCC and the EDC, uh, Employment Training and SUNY, uh, to Senator Schumer and, and Senator G Gillibrand and our Congresswoman, and also to the New, New York Department of Labor, uh, Russell Oliver, uh, he's with the Employment and Workforce uh, section, he's the director. And uh, this is regarding dislocated worker grants for Warren County. Uh, for training for the J-1 visa program and to help uh, the changing workforce to have uh, money available as the workforce uh, changes. On April 29th, I, uh, I signed on to a letter at the request of our Congresswoman uh, asking Governor Cuomo for guidance on the reopening of uh, summer camps. Uh, they needed. They need time to prepare, or to open, or not to open. And, and uh, these summer camps are very important, like everything, to our economy. And last, on the 29th, I also <coughs> signed on a look to a letter to our legislators on behalf of SUNY Adirondack and all community colleges, uh, appealing for more federal aid uh, to replace the drastic redu reductions in uh, state funding. That's a summary of some of my letter writing campaigns. Uh, let's see. I will remind everybody that the uh, if, if you have to do a, a three month retirement calendar, uh, that the clerk has uh, requested that they be completed and uh, submitted for the June meeting so we can approve it. Uh, and lastly, uh, I would like, I'd like to uh, make a comment about RV parks. Uh, there seems to be a lot of conv confusion. Uh, some people on uh, Facebook seem to think that uh, as of today, the RV parks will be open. Uh, that's not the case. They are closed. Uh, the exception that Warren County tried to make was to uh, consider essential housing or a safe harbor. And this was intended for people that live in their campers, period. Just for people that live in their campers. Because otherwise, if they can't get in an RV park, they're homeless, basically. And they'll be in the Walmart parking lot or, or somewhere else. So that was the whole intent of uh, Warren County's exception. It's not, you know, you can be 50% full and they're closed, except for the central housing and the safe harbor. I just wanted to make that perfectly clear. Yes, Supervisor Garrett. Frank, does that mean that that uh, if if you're just coming up for the capital district to spend a weekend, you're not allowed? Is that correct? Right. It's for the ones who who do six months here, or six months somewhere else. Right. I don't think that message is out there. No, I don't think so. Either. That's and, why. and I think that's going to be a problem around our area, and I think in every area. So I don't know how to get that message out, maybe through uh, Don, ask Don to reiterate, because people are calling all the time wondering, can we go to the RV park? We don't know. And the other comment I'd like to make, and I should have brought it up to the state legislature, it would be, it would be very helpful if the state would be a little more, uh, give us a little more firm answer on as far as summer recreation programs in our towns. I mean, I'm holding off on mine, but I see a lot of towns are canceled, and uh, I think we're all going to have to cancel everything we do. But just doesn't seem right 
kids have been cooped up since March. We want to get them out to play, but there again, I don't want to have anybody get sick in my family. So, but I think the RV thing is going to be a big problem for all of us. So. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. Thanks. Uh, I did have also sat in on the uh, uh, regional control room uh, phone calls. Uh, they, they are daily. Uh, I guess they're going okay. I, I don't know. We uh, we keep seeing we seem to keep getting uh, conflicting data as to uh, where where the counties are and where the state the state is. And uh, it's been almost a week now, and they haven't really cleared it up. So. But they did mention yesterday that uh, there would be guidance coming out, coming out from the governor's office uh, about low risk outdoor activities. So I'm not sure what they mean by that, but uh, they anticipated that that would be out in the next couple of days, and that was yesterday. So that concludes my report. <laughs> Reports by committee chairman on the past month's meetings and activities. Uh, Supervisor Beatty. That's the quietest I've heard it. <laughs> <laughs> that concludes my report. No. <laughs> no, thank you, Mr. Chairman. That was a very uh, extensive report you gave, and I appreciate the time and effort you put in there. Um, facilities met about three weeks ago. There's four resolutions on your docket, 164, 165, 166, and 167. Uh, they're fairly self-explanatory. Uh, 165, ratifying the actions of the chairman of the board and executing a grant application with the FAA uh, for reimbursement. Uh, as you know, there's a, what they call a, CARE, a CARES Act that the federal government has put money into different uh, areas uh, throughout every state uh, and they want to send us a check for uh, 69 grand and we need the uh, we need to ratify that uh, 165 uh, authorizing uh, submission of a uh, grant application to the state for the airport T hangar phase two project uh, that's also fairly self-explanatory we want to get our phase two uh, uh, airport T hangar which is 10 uh, hangars um, uh, up and running, and uh, that's a large grant request, uh, and uh, that will be a huge, once that's up and running and we get everything done and so forth, which is obviously down the road, it'll be a, it'll be a very nice revenue uh, addition to, the, uh, to our county airport and, and to help uh, reduce costs uh, uh, for our county airport and, uh, and the burden to our taxpayers. So that's a, that's a real positive. Uh, 166 is just asking for um, an agreement with a company so that we can repaint the county uh, lines out at the airport runway. Uh, the FAA said they'd like to be a little shinier or clearer. Uh, that's fine, uh, but there is a cost to that. And uh, 167, rejecting all bids uh, for the T hanger. We want to reject the bids because of the fact they came in too high, but we'll be, uh, we'll be going out again. So that, that concludes the uh, county facilities meeting. It was fairly self-explanatory. It was, uh, for the most part, cut and dry. We're going to uh, we're going to be having discussions on when we can bring back some of the workers and so forth. I know Kevin Hayjos has been uh, having discussions with myself, and that will be on the uh, agenda for the uh, meeting next week. Uh, and also, I'd like to make a comment that the shared services, which I also chair, uh, will be meeting next week. Uh, in this time uh, of, of dire financial predictions, uh, it only makes sense that we start looking at where we can consolidate uh, departments or merge agencies uh, where we feel there may or may not be duplication. Uh, the agenda was sent out to the committee uh, yesterday, and uh, I think we're going to have a lot of discussion on, uh, on different uh, agencies and departments. I know it's going to be uh, spearheaded by uh, County Administrator Ryan Moore, uh, as he has an in-depth uh, uh, analysis on in each department uh, being um, being their uh, uh, um, their uh, head. 
So uh, expect that to, to be somewhat lengthy, I believe, uh, next week, um, because we've got a lot of work in front of <clears> us <throat> to make uh, this county maintain the services that we were noted for, but yet pinch every penny tighter than we have before and, uh, and try to get the most out of every single buck for our taxpayers. Is that at the end of the day, we, we're all paying it and uh, it's kind of sad. I've got some comments at the end of the meeting, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I won't uh, use the, our time for committee reports to say them now, but I do have a couple of just a points of matter of fact at the end of the meeting. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll let you move on to the next person. Thank you. Uh, Supervisor Sheffler. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have no committee report this time. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman, I have no committee report this time. Thank you. Mr. Supervisor Gary. Yeah, we gave a synopsis of the budget on May 8th, uh, what we're working on. And again, thank you to Ryan and all the employees of Warren County who worked so hard on their austerity plans. Uh, I will uh, give a shout out to all my fellow supervisors. If you have any ideas, please email them to myself or Administrator Moore so we can look at them going forward. Um, as was said by Frank in his report, it's still a moving target how much we're going to have to raise um, out of our budget. And the numbers are looking a little anemic now coming in on sales tax. One thing I would mention, you know, we should try to get uh, the oxy tax buttoned up with uh, Air the Airbnbs so we can get the money from the people who are renting the uh, Airbnbs around or the bed. There's a lot of that going on. I don't think our contracts have ever been buttoned up with them, so we are losing some funds in, in that one there, too. The other thing is that there was some items that I brought up, the hiring freeze, uh, travel approvals, uh, purchase orders, contingency fund usage, and then uh, the analysis of personnel uh, and efficiencies of each department. Some of those things we're going to just institute, especially like the travel, uh, so don't bring travel uh, requests in unless it's absolutely not necessary or it involves something to do with the virus. Uh, and just please uh, ad adhere to what we've asked. And uh, you, you chairman of committees need to work with your department heads to make sure. And then if you're unclear, please get a hold of Ryan or myself so we can discuss it further. But that's all I got. We've got some challenges coming up. And I know we're up to the task. And I, again, I want to take, thank Frank, Ryan, Edna. When we get together, we have good meetings, and we certainly will go in more detail at a budget committee meeting at the appropriate time. Thank you. Oh, one thing I will point out, that uh, during this pandemic, the black flies have, have ignored that, because I could have used a mask on my forehead yesterday. I did some work outside and they decided that they were gonna take aim at my forehead. So I do, have the, I do have the scars to prove it. They're out and they don't worry about this pandemic. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Supervisor Cannavore. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the uh, Public Works Committee met on the uh, April 21, uh, represented in your packet by resolutions 174 April. through 178. Um, the first three, uh, 74, 75, and 76, basically have to do with cutting out the middleman relative to um, uh, gasoline purchasing uh, at the motor vehicle um, system. Uh, 178 has to do with um, uh, staircase, uh, I'm sorry, 177 has to do with the staircase uh, access uh, to a piece of property. Uh, there's a revocable uh, permit involved with that. Um, we've issued those in the past. Um, and, um, and 178 deals with the highway uh, program for, um, uh, for this year, um, significantly reduced from the original um, estimated amount of it was over $4 million, but in any event, uh, that's been cut back to uh, what you see in front of you on 178. And uh, my only other comment would be uh, uh, a little off the mark uh, in terms of public works, but the uh, response uh, out in some of the towns, including Bolton on the census is uh, anemic at best. Uh, I mean, by my estimation, even adjusted for seasonal housing 
Uh, we're, um, we have t uh, many towns that are uh, running uh, way behind on the, resp the census response. And, that, and that's after direct mailing, after advertisements, after news articles, uh, handing out the information cards with, with the masks and so many other types of things. So uh, I don't expect a response, uh, Ryan, but, uh, just uh, an FYI that um, we should keep a very watchful eye on, on, on that development uh, to try to figure out what, if anything, we're doing wrong. I know they've changed the census procedure this year, and perhaps that has a lot to do with it. But anyway, just kind of an FYI on that. And that concludes my report. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Uh, Supervisor Lee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Public Safety Committee met on April 20th. We sent a request of the Sheriff's Office to Personnel and Administration Committee that is on your, your agenda today. The, I'd like to report from the IDA as Vice Chairman of IDA that we are also um, working on land acquisition and subdivision of the former dewatering site in Fort Edward in order to accommodate a new manufacturer as quickly as, as possible. This would be a great addition to uh, Fort Edward and to the region. Also, as Vice Chairman of the Soil Water Conservation District, I'd like to report from them that their 2020 pre and shrub sale went better than any other in the past 30 years. Uh, they accommodated on how to do the pickups in, um, with personal distancing, and they give thanks to Warren County DPW for the load on, on traffic cones that they use. They developed an online Envirocon exam for schools to participate, another adaptation for this time we're in. They picked up and dropped off trees for the city of Gwens Falls, towns of Queenberry, and Warrensburg for, um, as, as requested through the Arbor Day program. They were working on grant projects with funding reimbursements to the communities and are continuing with the, the planning for that. And they, the amount of time that they've been utilizing to work on the farm and agricultural producers program is greater than it ever has been as well. I think that's a great benefit to our, our, our county, which uh, has most of small producers, and they are a very good resource for these small producers. Their 2019 annual report was emailed out and is posted on their, their website. That's um, my report. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor McDivitt. Oh, Supervisor Diamond, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No reports today. Thank you. Supervisor, Supervisor McDivitt. Thank you very much. Uh, I, uh, as Chairman of, of Public Health, I, I can't think of uh, anything more important in uh, today's day and age. Uh, the, uh, uh, the Maybe the dilemma for uh, uh, you know, Supervisor committee chairmanships is uh, how heavily do you get involved in the day-to-day -day activities of, uh, of the department? Uh, and uh, I have, uh, for all practical purposes, because the department is so well run, uh, have uh, basically not gotten heavily involved in public health uh, because there's only one thing I can do uh, to make a contribution, and it would not be probably a good one by getting heavily involved. So uh, I did reach out to Janelle yesterday in an effort to see if there was a void in in, serve, in county help in terms of her program. And we spent uh, a fair amount of time on the phone together, and she gave me, a, I think, a very uh, uh, persuasive and, and excellent evaluation in terms of how... Uh, Public health is being administered in Warren County, but just a, a couple of characteristics. Uh, the um, you know on the fourth of uh, May uh, we tested 62 people here in Warren County. Uh, uh, yesterday, approximately 30. Monday, 43. Uh, we have uh, currently, as of yesterday, had 277 people quarantined, and and. In, you know, you think about that for a moment, the monitoring and the tracking and the, you know, the paperwork considerations in terms of ensuring that, that uh, people are 
fundamentally doing the right thing in terms of their quarantine. Uh, uh, she talked about the new tracing program in terms of, and that's the program that uh, is being funded by Michael Bloomberg. Uh, uh, that there is a training program for tracers, uh, which uh, uh, the tracers will go through. And it's, it's, it's a Johns Hopkins program uh, and it's a self-monitored six hour program to ensure that people are, are involved. Uh, we have, uh, I think she told me, 22 uh, uh, assigned uh, tracers, uh, a series of volunteers, and you know the number approximates about, about 50. So the bottom line uh, with our, our, our public health is uh, they are doing a remarkable job in terms of uh, uh, keeping us healthy uh, and keeping keeping us safe. Uh, working very very hard, working long hours, but uh, but doing doing uh, yeoman's work. Uh, so, in addition to that, uh, last uh, to change the topic for a moment, uh, Ed Bartholomew and myself last Friday spent a number of hours with a, a reasonably new industry here in Warren County, uh, actually. Uh, in Queensbury off Big Durham, Boom Road, and uh, it's an organization called Kirsch Helmets, and they basically have a rather, I think, remarkable uh, uh, helmet that is used for um, people that uh, uh, ride motorcycles, uh, and there are a couple of supervisors that engage in that uh, activity, and they would be happy to hear the, uh, the, the, so they are looking for a little bit of help, and, and what they have is a uh, uh, an interesting technology in terms of uh, uh, providing, uh, you know, uh, a good helmet uh, that that has some technology incorporated into it uh, that provides a, a very safe uh, uh, ending to, to to people that may uh, unfortunately uh, fall off a motorcycle or get into an accident. That 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 it, that it has a technology in terms of significantly reducing. Uh, the, the medical and negative effects of, of that. So it uh, it's a um, it, it, it's good, and, and it, we we were well masked and, and well distanced in terms of uh, the two or three hours we spent with them in terms of going through uh, the manufacturing process. And uh, I think they need a little bit of help in terms of uh, some more automated equipment to, to enable them to quickly uh, produce their product. So. Uh, we will uh, talk about that in further detail in committee next week, uh, but uh, that uh, is a positive note for Warren County. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Supervisor Bramer. Thank you so much, Chairman Thomas. Environmental Concerns and Real Property just has one resolution on for today. And I wanna echo what Supervisor McDevitt just said about how great our County Public Health Department is doing. I know Janelle is on this call or she was at some point and I just wanna tell her thank you from all of us for what a great job she's doing and really doing a uh, wonderful job representing Warren County and how well prepared our Public Health Department is. The other thing I wanna mention now um, is my support for fl floor resolution number one, which has to do with the food banks and supporting the food banks. I know, I'm sure that will pass, um, and I'm happy that we're bringing that up to the to the floor today. And I wanna recognize all of our schools who are doing a really great job getting food out to our children, getting the breakfast and the lunches um, out to them. And I'm worried about what we're going to do this summer when we don't have the other school, um, I'm sorry, other summer programs, especially it, like in Queensbury and Glens Falls and the Northern parts of our county. So I'm hopeful that we will all work together and figure out how we can um, use existing funds to distribute food to the kids out there this summer when we don't have our other formalized programs going on. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Supervisor Driscoll. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the uh, Human Services Committee did not meet last month. Um, it will be meeting this coming Monday, um, and we're on at around 10.30. Um, uh, Commissioner Chris Hanchett from DSS will be uh, presenting, uh, on, as well as on uh, Countryside, um, 
Throughout the month, I received regular communications uh, from DSS, uh, Chris Anchet and, and Deputy Commissioner uh, Dina Mastriani. Uh, I also received communications with uh, uh, Denise Duresta from Veterans. Uh, I try to share that information with the members of the Human Service Committee. Any other um, members of the um, of the board who are interested in that information, I, I'd be happy to share those communications as I get them. Um, there's no resolutions for this month. Um, there will be, uh, I expect, for next month. Um, I'm also going to be participating in um, Warren County Youth Bureau's uh, Zoom meeting, which I understand is going to take place at 2 o'clock this coming Monday. Um, it'll be my first. Uh, meeting on that committee. And I think there's two or three other um, supervisors who are also uh, part of that uh, committee. Uh, I'd also like to reach out to um, uh, my colleagues who um, have um, relationships with Airbnbs um, uh, in work in Glens Falls. Uh, uh, I'm aware of a, um, an Airbnb in my uh, ward. And uh, the city has uh, reached out to me to see if there's a template or a, um, uh, a letter that other uh, communities have shared with uh, Airbnb owners that they might be able to um, uh, use as a, uh, as a template for a, uh, a letter that they would like to, uh, to get out. So if anyone is interested in doing that, they could certainly email me at their convenience. And then finally, so I don't miss it uh, in the announcements, um, uh, Recently, OSTAR recognized um, uh, nurses uh, from throughout the region, um, and one of our very own, uh, Kim Matz, who's a home uh, care nurse uh, from Public Health Services, was one of, I think, 10 or 12 uh, nurses from throughout the region who was recognized in the OSTAR, and I want to congratulate her, but also um, all of the uh, all of the nurses, uh, public health officials. I think uh, you recognize one, but there's uh, plenty of other people uh, in line doing that same type of uh, good work. I also want to thank, um, uh, on behalf of, uh, of health services, uh, I think the sheriff's department, some other departments uh, who um, uh, county um, uh, employees, administrators, and um, as well as area businesses have. Um, provided some uh, some lunches and, and those types of things. Now, I'm not sure if, if that's uh, uh, cool to be saying, but it, it's, it's certainly appreciated. And, um, uh, you know, if you got a pizza or uh, uh, a sub and sandwiches, uh, it's certainly a nice gesture. And I know that uh, we're reaching out uh, to, to thank the people in our community who are doing that type of stuff. I think it's nice that uh, our county uh, employees are also getting that same type of recognition. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Supervisor Frazier. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> the Finance Committee met on April the 30th, and again, briefly, on May the 11th. As a result of those two meetings, we have resolutions 162 and 163, 184 to 189, and 191 to 192. Most of them are pretty self explanatory, so I don't think I'm going to go down through those four or five. Um, but I would like to echo Claudia's remarks as far as public health and Janelle. The federal department does such a wonderful job, and it's nice to see that they're being recognized and doing outstanding the job that they do. Uh, I want to also mention that I, like have been mentioned, I attended the austerity budget meeting, and it was a very enlightening but very uh, informative meeting, and it was amazing to me amount of work that goes into some of these departments who have to make cuts. And, Feel for them. I think it was a very hard decision, but I also learned a lot of that. And I think if Treasurer Swan is here, I know he has something he'd like to report to us on. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah, we can, Mike. There we go. Now I got my everything's good. All right. First of all, sure. um, I'm going to start with a little bit of good news. Um, as of yesterday morning, all of the state and federal payments that were due to the county for whatever DSS and road work and whatever um, have all come in on time and for the anticipated amount. So that's good news. 
Um, on the not so good news side, we haven't received any casino money since the fourth quarter of last year. And we have not received any of the state matching funds for tourism. Um, the other part of this is the interest that we collect on our bank accounts has dropped from 2.75 to three quarters of a percent. So we're not going to come anywhere near close to the budgeted amount for interest for 2020. Um, and even more bad news, sales tax. I just about 20 minutes ago received the um, last portion of April's amount and we're down for the month of April a little over $590,000, which is right around the state average of between 26 and 30% down. Um, any questions about that? Okay. Um, lastly, I would like to just uh, do a call out to the treasurer's office staff. Uh, Warren County was one of only a couple of counties that were able to close their books on time this year. Um, and that was due to the dedication and the hard work of my staff. And also I'd like to give them a little pat on the back because everything has been done on time. All of the bills, all of the grants, all of the DSS checks, payroll checks, everything else has all been done on time and we have not disrupted any services for any of the other departments or agencies in the county. So I'm just, I'm really proud of my guys. They've, they've really stepped up. Thank you, any questions? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have one. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Mike, uh, you, you mentioned that the state hasn't uh, uh, given us our matching tourism dollars. How many dollars is that? Uh, I don't have the exact amount. Lisa Grant has that. I'm not sure right off the top of my head, but it's it's several thousands of dollars. Okay. All right. That was my question. Thanks. Why haven't we gotten that, Mike? What's that? Why haven't we gotten it? I have no idea. Um, it just we just I just realized this at the beginning of last week that um, that this money had not come in, so we're trying to chase it down. I have not received an answer from anybody yet. Okay, thank you. Uh, Supervisor Diamond. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mike, I got a question. In your chairman's report, you mentioned that state aid could possibly be reduced between 25 and 30 percent, and it's a moving target. We really don't know what that is. But let me ask you what does 25 percent mean to the county's sales? Sorry, I'm having, I'm having trouble hearing. I can't understand exactly what Supervisor Diamond is asking. I'll, I'll try to talk closer to the microphone. In the chairman's report, he had mentioned that state aid is going to be reduced anywhere between 25 and 30 percent. And, you know, at this point in time, we do realize it's a moving target. But what would 25 percent mean reduction in our state aid as compared to uh, what we budgeted for uh, 2020? Oh, that's a better question for the budget officer to ask, or maybe even Frank might be able to answer that from last year. But um, it's upwards in the four to five million dollar range, depending okay. on which department we're looking at. Maybe six, as I'm starting to think about it. So that, along with the loss of sales tax, you know, we're gonna we're gonna be by the end of this year, we're gonna we're gonna need to do some cutting. <laughs> Okay, thank, thank you. you. Mike, and excellent report. Okay, thank you, Edna. Mm -hmm. uh, I need to back up here a couple. I uh, inadvertently uh, skipped over Supervisor Bruno. Sorry. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have nothing to report at this time. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, we have uh, Supervisor Simpson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, personnel and administration did meet on uh, April 30th and uh, coming out of that committee meeting, we have resolutions 179 through 183, which I would ask for your support for. Um, I wanna thank um, the, those that reached out to me with some ideas um, in uh, you know how we transition back into the county and, and start our reopening as it concerns to uh, you know, the health and uh, well-being of our employees. And, and um, you know, we, we really have a lot of work to do to um, figure out how to make this just a smooth transition for everyone as they do come back. So um, with your support, Mr. Chairman, I would like to um, 
establish a working group. Um, I do have the members of the group. It's uh, Supervisor Hogan, Tammy DiLorenzo, Jackie Figueroa, Brad McGowan, Liza Oschendorf, Amy Klute, Trish Nenger, and you also, Mr. Chairman. And um, I, we are probably going to have a meeting scheduled here soon. Uh, Jackie is working on that now. But um, you know, we've got to figure out um, how we're going to uh, move forward, and um, you know, under these new circumstances and uh, new atmosphere. So, um, I also would like to um, recognize uh, uh, Supervisor Bramer's support for uh, Resolution Number One for the uh, food bank, and um, I would also ask to uh, partner with me in promoting the. Uh, Take five for New York Food Bank Challenge. And, uh, you know, our Northeastern Food Bank has uh, done an incredible job in our area over the last um, 10 weeks uh, meeting the needs of our community. And I think it's really important. And uh, earlier this week, I, uh, I took the challenge and I, I challenge all of my colleagues here on the board to uh, take that challenge and thank those that have and please promote that far and wide. And with that, um, I'll wait to uh, talk about more at the uh, end of the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Supervisor McGowan, do you have a question? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. How could you tell? Is it my big hand? <laughs> he is on, Mr. McGowan, you are on that committee also. I'm sorry, I skipped over your name. <laughs> no, 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 you you, uh, you put my name in there, but I, you forgot two, I think, important ones. I thought, um, one, I, I thought um, Frank Morehouse um, would be very important uh, in, in helping, um, you know, in, in the reopening, because we, we really need to involve him. Um, and the infrastructure of it, and um, and and Rachel Sieber, who really uh, um, fired me up on the whole idea, and I really can't take the credit. It's it's really um, her too. So, uh, uh, is, is that all right, uh, Matt? Uh, Supervisor McGowan, I will accept your suggestions, okay. and uh, thank, thank you very much. No, thank you. Okay, uh, let's see. Next we have a uh, Supervisor Hogan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I won't take long with the Cooperative Extension Report since we've heard from them already today. I just want to encourage everyone to keep checking the CCE website. They are a wealth of resources to both entertain and educate at this time. And uh, Matt, yeah, I'm all in supporting the regional food bank as the former director for a food pantry. I absolutely understand how important their work is. And thank you for, for our resolution today. I will definitely be supporting that. That's all. Thank you. Uh, Supervisor Dickinson. Uh, thank you, Frank. Um, uh, occupancy tax did have a meeting May 8th. Uh, out of that came two uh, resolutions, 172 and uh, 173. Uh, 172 is uh, authorizing a waiver of a 5% penalty. That's not the interest, it's a penalty. And the other one is uh, um, amending a resolution 49 after listening to uh, Supervisor Strau whine and cry about the Moon Festival. We've reinstated the five thousand uh, dollars gladly. Uh, it's a great event, and it's predominantly uh, volunteer, and um, they certainly can use the money. And hopefully, by the time they have the event, they'll be able to have the event. So, uh, that's my report. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Supervisor Molino. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, based on the results of a tourism department survey a couple of weeks ago, we're finding out that people are really interested in coming up to our area in the summer. And one of their main um, thoughts was the safety of how we're going to put it out. So I think that's um, a great role. Uh, we haven't 
rolled out the red carpet yet to uh, advertise the whole county through the tourism department. We're just waiting to get the okay. We're all ready to go when that happens. But we are doing some uh, e-blasts about uh, after Memorial Day or during Memorial Day for people that have family and friends coming to the area to suggest uh, places they can go with the, the, the guidance of safety and things that, that, that are open. Based on the Smith travel report on the room demands, um, Smith Travel says the daily hotel rooms were 500 to 600 dollars, 600 rooms throughout April. And the daily demand in, already in May has jumped a thousand rooms. So people are starting to come up, whether we like it or not. Um, the one big thing, um, just note for Mr. Garrity, something that works good for those bugs is our hand sanitizer. <laughs> Believe it or not, the prison one is probably the most effective. But anyway, um, the short-term rental, this is going to be a champion of myself after this stuff is all over because we're getting killed on this. Uh, according to Airbnb, the demand was added 300 units in the last month. And that's 300 room nights that we're not collecting not tax or sales tax on. And I firmly believe that this county should uh, do a local law to include any business that rents rooms under 30 days has to get a permit from the county, even if it's only $25 a year. This way we can keep track of them. And that's even little businesses like myself, uh, some of the smaller businesses, but these Airbnb and all these advertisers on the internet that they can come. I've seen it in Lake Luzerne, and I know all of us that have small towns have seen it. I'm closed. I can't make any money. I can't collect sales tax or our tax, but these people are running every weekend, every week. People are here. We see it. And uh, I think it's time that we really got together and, and come up with something. Um, the, the department has had, we visited the uh, marketing plan for 2020, and uh, we will be doing some promotions, not spending on some promotions for 2020. It will not affect the way we do things, but it will help cut the uh, budget so we can save some money for the next year. Um, I too like, um, personally would like to thank, starting from Mike Wilde, Frank Dietrich, Gina from the Lake Door Chamber, Mike Biddle from ARCC, Joanne from the Tourism Department, and Bob Thalman from EDC. This group has gotten together. It's amazing what they've accomplished. The uh, pamphlet that they uh, put out is 50, 60 pages, but I, I listen in on most of their conversation. And I, I, I want to applaud them for really working together and, and putting up a plan that we can get our tourism in our county going as soon as the carpet can be laid out. And that's the end of my report, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Supervisor Charles. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I have no committee report for this month. However, uh, I am wiping the tears away, uh, Supervisor Dickinson. Um, I do wish support for the uh, Bloom Festival. Uh, just to return to what we normally give them, if you cut and shave $5,000, uh, it's going to cut to the quality of the event. And this year, uh, as we go forward, it's going to cut our ability to better provide COVID security for those who will be attending this year. And as you will, we all know, there's gonna to have to be some changes to accommodate this kind of uh, crowd. But this is a nationally recognized event. And it's the result of a hardworking group of people on a committee uh, led by Chairman Mark Donahue. And um, uh, these people are all volunteer. There is no one on this committee that makes a profit doing this. Um, and so um, I would support, I would enjoy your support uh, for, you know, continuing to, uh, you know, fund this event as we have in the past on resolution 173. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Supervisor McGowan. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, oh, oh, am I off mute? All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, uh, we uh, had a uh, quick meeting uh, May 11th uh, for the support services there. Um, and that's resolution 190. Uh, authorize an agreement with the New York State Board of Elections to accept the HAVA CARES grant, uh, which is our funds to be used for the uh, federal election. Um, you know, and then uh, um, immediately following, um, immediately following that, we uh, we had to you know roll it right into finance. So I, uh, it's to uh, to help pay. Uh, you know, um, it's a grant money to uh, to help. Uh, finance, um, you know, the, the, the elections coming up with the board elections. So I hope you all for your support. Um, I also want to uh, thank everyone. Uh, I know this has been some trying some times that we've all have and a lot of us. Uh, well, I'd have to say most of us have never seen this before. And I, I just want to thank everybody. Uh, it's been great working with everybody and and pulling together uh, on all sides and, and with and with the um, great ideas I think the more heads that we have in uh together and figuring this all out uh and and what we can do uh you know waiting for the state to come up with the ideas but we know our area the best and and i just want to reach out and thank everybody to, you know for working so hard together um because i know this has been uh something that's been totally different and really do appreciate it thank you mr chairman thank you uh, Supervisor Sieber. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I know that um, I think I'm last here on the, on the reports coming in, so um, I apologize in advance. I, I'm never really brief, but um, I do know this month has been very busy for all of us, and I certainly appreciate it. I had an opportunity for the two NACO, the National Advocacy um, uh conference that we participate in as a standing member to participate in both of those committees that I'm assigned to. Uh, the Resilient Counties Committee met on May 13th and on April 24th. The Public Safety and Criminal Justice Committee met on May 6th and May 1st. Both of those provided us with opportunities about grant funding um, that did not require a match along with best practices. Just so that you guys know, many of our um, not only uh, some supervisors and Supervisor Leggett uh, stays up on to date on that, but Marcy Flores continues to participate where there's opportunities for her office, our sheriff, as well as our DA and our public defender's office. So I appreciate you guys tuning in for those things as they're applicable, but also for us to learn some lessons uh, from those meetings as well. To that point, Supervisor Beatty and I uh, made an extra effort to make sure we grabbed handouts and information to bring back after our meeting. All of that should have been emailed out. Thank you to Amanda for sending those to uh, every supervisor where it may have been applicable. Um, you know, to that point, I just wanted, we thought maybe we'd be back in person and have an opportunity to present uh, Colin Powell's book to Chairman Thomas. And it was free, Chairman Thomas, don't worry, we weren't you know, spending any money buying the book, but NACO did provide it um, to all participants. And we thought as chairman of the board, it was important that we brought you back that um, and stuffed it in our luggage. So it was called, It Worked For Me in Life and Leadership. And he was an incredible speaker during that. So um, we hope that you, know, you enjoy that book, but also sent out information on the Blue Ribbon Campaign as much as we could with the um, awareness pins. So hopefully those have reached the majority of you as well. We didn't have enough for, for everyone, but hopefully we continue in our towns and our municipalities to support with blue ribbons, our frontline workers. Uh, additionally, there is a resolution today in front of you that will need to come off of the floor. It was circulated to all members on Wednesday around three, I think 2.53 PM from Amanda who worked very hard with our county administrator and our chairman of the board to have this addressed. Uh, George Frone is a councilman with the town of Queensbury 
but he is also on the board of governors for the Glens Falls Hospital. So at the appropriate time, Mr. Chairman, uh, if there's any questions regarding that, I know George was gonna try to um, tune in, but he's not there. I'm sure if there's questions, other members can address that and would certainly appreciate your support. Um, that resolution, again, will be, be discussed, I'm sure, cert soon, but he is asking that municipalities all take a look at that for Glens Falls Hospital's ongoing efforts to obtain federal and state reimbursement uh, to offset these costs as it relates to COVID, which our Congresswoman addressed briefly in her remarks this morning as well. Lastly, I just wanna highlight for those uh, watching on YouTube, I know that there's a lot of confusion about how do you leave a live comment? Um, how do you get to ask a question? And that is uh, a newfound kind of problem this morning that we discovered you have to log in, you have to create an account in order to leave a comment. So I've gotten some text while you know we've been here talking about this. Just make sure that if you're using it on the app or on the website, you do need to log in and have your name there. Um, and you put that into the record for our incredible public relations officer to be able to see that. Don Lehman is working around the clock. And I think if any of us had any questions about this type of a position, we see the benefits from day one um, of providing that information transparently to the public. And again, I know there's been a ton of emails and phone calls, and I certainly appreciate the quick reply that we're continuing to have from all of our staff, our county administrator, and um, you know everyone on board. So that would conclude my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, uh, thank you for the book from uh, Colin Powell. Very much appreciate. Very welcome. Uh, I believe I skipped over Supervisor Wild. Uh, personally, I didn't think he was here, so I haven't seen him. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. I know you'd rather <laughs> be working on some other things about our economic recovery, but I would like to speak today. And um, I did. I definitely didn't want to interrupt my esteemed colleagues, uh, Supervisor McGowan and Supervisor Sieber. Uh, but there's a, a couple of things, and I, I do need to thank Rachel for reminding me about some good news. Um, I was asked by SUNY Adirondack to do a little brief uh, speech, even though I hate to use that word, but it was very brief to the graduating class of SUNY Adirondack. And there were two students that were uh, nominated by SUNY uh, that I specifically mentioned in terms of their accomplishments and their ability to excel at uh, their work at SUNY. And because of the COVID issues, we normally would have the opportunity to, to meet them and honor them in person. Hopefully we can do that in June, uh, or if not in June, maybe in July. But I'd look forward to trying to get them on the agenda uh, once we have that opportunity. Secondarily, um, there are no resolutions in front of us today, but I would like to just add a little bit more about the task force. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you did forget to mention Mark Bean. Uh, Mark Bean from Bean <laughs> has been uh, a wonderful asset to us. And that leads me into one of the things, one of the new things that we're working on is a, um, let's call it a communication theme. There's a number of organizations across the county, uh, our tourism department, the different chambers that are communicating about our tourism industry. And we're trying to get together to yeah. come up with a common theme that we can all kind of uh, build our individual messaging off of. And I, I have to thank Mark for, for bringing that up and moving that forward. As a matter of fact, I've also asked that uh, we reach out and try to extend uh, the guidance that we've issued for the RV parks and hopefully that'll be coming out very soon also to help support the uh, messaging that we're doing ourselves at the county. Um, you've all probably seen uh, some of the procedures documents that have uh, been prepared uh, by the hospitality group and the food and beverage groups. Uh, these are basically taking the CDC guidelines and obviously the governor's coming out with new guidelines daily. Sometimes it appears to be hourly but we will be matching these with those requirements and they go into specific details about hand washing. And some of the guidance you'll see is, is just, you need to wash your hands. This goes into more specific detail about how you can uh, guide your organization, whether it be large or small, to adhere to these guidelines and certain things that you can develop within your own procedures to help satisfy those. And you see me today, I'm gonna bring up, you know, I do have a Lake George hat on today but the task force isn't really focused on Lake George. It's focused on helping getting our tourism industry started 
but it is really countywide. And we are moving towards uh, taking some of these guidances that were developed by some of our businesses in Lake George and moving out to the rest of the community. And I look forward to the supervisors helping do that so we can get feedback. The whole idea is to have, and, and maybe it's opportunistic, but have the county businesses come together and say, these are the guidelines in the operating procedures that we support and go to the governor and say, when you're ready to allow us to be open, we're ready to open and we're gonna do it safely for not only our guests and for our employees, but for the public as a whole. Um, I'm gonna turn over to uh, Ryan Moore here briefly. Ryan, I'm gonna throw you under the bus. You and Don, as well as Mark, did a great job pulling together this partnership for recovery document, pulling all the business together. I'm gonna to leave that to you because you had your hands at it from the beginning. And I, I have to thank you for that also. Um, just one more thing. Um, we talk about safety. We talk about masks. I'm not sure how we're going to get compliance, but one of the things that I, I did have uh, this week was a conversation with a couple of people from downstate, and they asked me what was going on up here. And I explained that we're still um, trying to break into that phase one opening, um, but they had two questions. What's going to be open if we come to Lake George? And of course, I related back and forth about take out restaurants, but they also asked about masks. Uh, these people coming from downstate have had a much tougher time than we have here in Warren County. And many of them are extremely concerned about their safety and they wanna be safe when they come up here. So I'm not sure how we're gonna do that, but we need to work together, not only as a board, but also as a community to try to reinforce the fact that masks are important, not only for ourselves and for our public, but also for our guests. And we don't want to lose our tourism economy. If we slip, we only have 10 to 12 weeks to really make our money. It's going to have a severe impact on each and every one of us if we have to close. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's all I have for this morning, or should I say this afternoon? I'm not even sure where we are. Thanks. Thank you. Yes. So, yeah, if we've gone all around to all the committee chairmen, if I could have an addendum, um, okay. Director LaFleur of OES is, is online here. I asked him earlier if there was anything, any updates that we should know about. So without any objection, we could ask them to, to yeah. chime in briefly. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Brian, do you have anything you'd, you'd like to add on our, our status here in the county? Yeah, yes, thanks. Uh, Supervisor Leggett, a couple things. Um, you may or may not have realized that good or bad, our office has become a warehouse and a warehousing operation for all the material, the PPE and other things that are coming from the state stockpile and um, then being sent out to the hospital, the health centers, the nursing homes and all the others that are needing this stuff. So that has been a challenge for us. Uh, we're not set up to do that kind of work, but uh, we're getting through it. So uh, I appreciate the help that we received from some. Um, I want to mention testing kits. Uh, someone else mentioned that. I think uh, Senator uh, Senator Steck. Um, the nursing homes, as you have heard, are being tasked with testing their employees and their residents, but more importantly, their employees twice a week. And in our particular um, County with information from our public health people, that's 1600 test kits a week. On top of that, you put in the test site that we have here and the test kits that are necessary there. We're looking at almost 2000 test kits a week. And right now we're getting from the state maybe two or 300 a week. So it is an issue. There are nursing home people that are very concerned because they have a deadline on the 20th where they're supposed to have their plan and all this stuff in place. And um, it's not just here, it's not just the state, it's nationwide. Everybody wants to do the testing, but the kits just don't exist. So that is something we're working on. Uh, we're trying to uh, move that along in the state. The problem is, at least in New York State, we have 62 counties that all want test kits, hundreds of thousands of them when you add it up. So I'm not sure where we're headed with that. Um, the cloth masks, uh, we have received over 30,000 of those, and I try to get those out as quickly as I can. 
Uh, I was asked, is there more coming? That is a really good question. Everything that we get from the state, we have a system called New York Responds. We have to put the information in. What do you want? What are you asking for? And we put stuff in there daily and we get from them what they decide they want to give us. It has nothing to do with what we've asked for. Um, so it's really hard to know what you're going to get. Uh, lots of times we don't know until they pull into the parking lot and call a cell phone and say, we're here. And that could be a Sunday or three o'clock in the morning, whatever. So that has been challenging. Um, but uh, we're trying really hard to get the stuff out to the people in the field. It doesn't do any good for the stuff to be sitting in my garage. It needs to be out to the people that need to have it. <clears throat> Hand sanitizer. There was some information that went out. I'm not sure exactly where that Warren County was handing out free hand sanitizer. And what's caused this issue is there is legislation in one of the executive orders 202.30 that says that if you as an employer are unable to get the PPE that you need for your people to meet your requirements, then you should reach out to your local emergency manager. Uh, that would be me. Um, the problem is we don't have that product, nor are we set up to start dispensing it to every business or everybody else. So we did get some calls. Um, uh, Don Lehman has helped out getting the message out on uh, social media and whatever that, hey, you know, that's not our job. That's not what we're doing. Uh, what they miss in the executive order says, reach out to your emergency manager. And what sentence following that says, if they have it available. So uh, we just remind everybody that that's kind of where we're at there. Um, the masks, and you recall, we came to the board looking for dollars for the masks and the PPE for our own employees so that we could open up. And right now uh, we have purchased what's necessary. We have some more on order. We are uh, doing very well price-wise. I've given all that uh, information to the administrator. Uh, we're doing very well as far as that goes. Homemade masks, uh, thanks to uh, Don Lehman and all the people in the public that have, we've received in here just in my office over 350 masks. And uh, we get them out to where they need to go. There is a, uh, when they have these big pantry give outs and stuff like that, there's one for the veterans on the 23rd. And it's great to give these masks to those people to hand out. Uh, one quick thing, pending storms, you know that there's stuff coming later today. Hopefully it's not going to be bad for us, but uh, I want everybody to be aware we are in the um, in the area listed as uh, probably more probable to get it than maybe some of the others. And lastly, on a really good note, I appreciate everybody's support. The storage building is in progress behind us, and uh, the contractor is doing a great job uh, under the uh, with Kevin Hajos uh, keeping track, and uh, I appreciate that. That's all I have. Yeah. Thank you, Director LaFleur. Um, once again, our Department of Office of Emergency Services is behind the scenes helping the county with this whole response and doing a great job in coordination with all the other departments. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Supervisor Leader. And Brian? Uh, next, we have the report from the county administrator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, employee anniversary is this month. With 20 years, we have Kevin Monroe in DPW. Uh, with 15 years, Linda Lewis in Office for the Aging. Uh, congratulations to both of them and thank you for your dedication to Warren County. A few things that have been mentioned in the other reports that I'll address, uh, starting with uh, Mike Wild. I don't get credit for that um, uh, report that we uh, issued earlier this week. I wrote three pages of it. We had 50 authors from uh, various sectors uh, in this economy uh, that are very busy, including dealing with employees that they have, that they care very much about, that have been laid off uh, and, and trying to help those employees. They all took time out of their schedule to get us a draft. Uh, I think we asked for it towards the end of the week uh, and we wanted a draft by Tuesday night. And um, most of them, I think there were maybe like five or six stragglers, but most of them got us what we wanted and they did a great job. Uh, uh, Don Lehman and uh, Mark Bean did a lot of copy editing and supplemental uh, writing, such as the executive summary. 
and then Peter Gerard in tourism made it all look nice. Uh, if you had gone with my original format, it would have been very boring. People would have fallen asleep on the fifth page. Uh, so thank you to all of them. Uh, they really deserve the credit for, for the report, not me. I, I wrote three pages of it. Uh, and Ed Bartholomew, who came up with the idea and really pushed it in one of our conference calls. Uh, thank you to Ed for that. Um, the uh, control room, uh, the issue of conflicting data, that's actually why I was late to the Board of Supervisors meeting. Uh, the uh, eight counties, uh, the, the, there's been an issue of, so the counties get data from the hospitals and then uh, the counties provide that data to the public, the hospitals provide data to the state, and then the state provides that data to the public. And there's a lot of uh, uh, room in that uh, for, for error. Uh, Warren County is not having it. We only have one hospital. Uh, other counties have a lot more than one hospital, and these are big hospitals. So what we're trying to do is clear that up, make sure that uh, all the communication uh, is actually flowing in the same direction and that we're all working off the same set of numbers. So the uh, county exec, there's two county executives, four county administrators, and two chairman of the board uh, that, that were part of that this morning, uh, getting all of our information together to make sure that um, uh, we know that the state is looking at the right stuff. Uh, at least in one case, in one of the southern counties, it appears that one of their hospitals was reporting uh, hospitalizations that were essentially downstate people that they had taken in. It shouldn't have been part of the capital region count. So uh, those are some of the intricacies that we're working through on the data. We hope to have that uh, uh, on the road to be being cleared up uh, by two o'clock today when we talk. Uh, I'll report back on that tonight, uh, as I always do. Um, the strategy that we have on the phases, uh, the rules that have been written right now for phase one, uh, there's a lot of specific guidance up there on that New York Forward website. There's specific industry breakouts within the sectors that are open under phase one. You don't see the same amount of detail under phases two, three, and four, uh, which is both a source of frustration because people, businesses need some lead time to know when they can do things that they need to do. Uh, but it's also an opportunity, I think, and I've been working with people like Dave King to say, okay, Dave, the rule isn't written yet for the campgrounds. How would you do it if you were the state? Why, what, how would you phase your business open in a manner that's safe for public health? You know what all of the uh, public health guidelines are? You know all the social distancing and PPE recommendations? So let's try to come up with something that we can then pitch to the other, the other county leaders and the state leaders. And we'll see to the extent that the rules haven't been written if we can actually have a positive contribution on that process. Uh, that's a lot of work. Our businesses are embracing it and uh, we, we're not looking to do anything that's unsafe. Uh, there are two competing uh, uh, desires here uh, to keep everything locked down for public health and also to open everything back up for economic health. And they kind of meet like this. And what we're trying to do is, is push that border where they meet to make sure that it's, it's the best case scenario for everybody. Um, thank you to everybody that's working with us on that. Uh, the RV parks and camps, here's what happened on those. They've never been part of other, other accommodations. So in the pause guidelines that have gone out since March, uh, there have been exceptions made for quote, hotels and other accommodations. Uh, Empire State Development and the second floor have never viewed uh, camps as other accommodations. Uh, they viewed them as recreation. Some of the individual camps and their advocacy organizations have come in and done their own interpretations of what other accommodations means. Uh, the official position of the state is these things are all closed until, they're, until the state opens them up. Uh, Warren County, uh, especially Sheriff Lafar, uh, had some concerns with that, and it gets to what uh, the chairman was discussing earlier in this meeting, that you, you create situations of homelessness where somebody lives in their camper, you know, in the, in the winter months they're down south, and in the summer months they're up here, and we had actually some campers that were escorted out of Vermont and dumped into New York State back in March and April. Uh, that's the situation we were trying to address. Uh, if you have that and we have all of the RV parks shut, they're going to end up in Walmart and they're going to be dumping out their tanks out in public. It's a public health, a sanitation issue. 
Uh, so we developed the safe harbor uh, protocols here in Warren County uh, with the help of the sheriff and the public health department. And we got ESD to buy into that. Uh, that's going back, you know, I think into early to mid April. I'd have to check my dates again. Uh, so the notion that uh, these have always been allowed and that some counties are going on their own and cracking down on it, it's not true. It's the opposite. None of it is allowed. And to some extent, counties like ours have been able to get a door, the door open a crack to accommodate public health needs. Um, it's been a problem all around the state, not just here. Uh, Rensselaer County, for instance, has one county that borders them not allowing anything at all, and the other county that borders them allowing everything. Uh, and they've been caught in the middle, and it's been a real fiasco for them. Uh, and when the chairman talks about counties threatening to go rogue, uh, th this, this type of issue is a good example of why. Uh, we've been trying to do our best with it. Uh, the initial guidelines that we came up with are still the guidelines. Uh, and like I said, I'm working closely with people like Dave King to try to come up with some something that makes sense for how, how we can turn the page and move forward. Um, it's a lot of work, uh, but I think, I think we'll end up in a good spot. Uh, thanks to Dave and, and everybody else that's been part of that process. Um, I uh, just want to say, I don't want to go through all of my calendar, but, but I do want everybody to know that county departments are still operating to the extent that they can. The rules that they've had are if you can do it at home, continue doing it and do it at home. Uh, if you can't do it at home and it's got to be done, come in here and do it. Uh, try to do it as quickly as possible and with as few people as possible. Um, during all of that, the departments have not only kept up with uh, their essential services, but they've also done a whole lot of things that are outside of their scope of services to help us out with the coronavirus response. Uh, the Board of Elections and DMV have been working with Supervisor McGowan and the Buildings Department to build their, our own <laughs> plexiglass shields for polling places for when the DMV booths start to open. Uh, they've been thinking outside the box and, and, and working on, on all of that. They're saving us a lot of money and protecting public health. You had some of the election machine companies that were out there trying to sell us for $500 a piece, a shield that would go over one of the polling site tables, which we thought was crazy. We can make it ourselves for what, $50, Brad? Is that about right? So, so that's what we're doing. Uh, that's one example. You all saw, because uh, a lot of you participated in it, the clerk of the board uh, worked with Countryside to put together Mother's Day cards for those mothers that live there that don't get to see their children and their grandchildren. Don's posted pictures on our website with the tea party that they had. It was just, it was beautiful. Uh, and we're working on an even more beautiful initiative like that from the probation department. I won't give away too many of those details. Maybe if you call Bob Yusey, uh, he'll be more generous with that than I will. But what he's planning uh, is just, it's going to be amazing. Um, probation's also been out there in the field helping the sheriff's department to educate people about social distancing and wearing your mask. And uh, we, we can't say how much we appreciate that. There's an example, you know, probation officers that is not in their job description, but when the sheriff needed some help, they were the first ones to step up to the plate and offer it, and we thank them for that. The uh, uh, DPW, um, Supervisor Simpson, rep food drive is being held on uh, the county fairgrounds. It's my understanding that Kevin Hajos is paying for the insurance certificate out of his own pocket. Kevin jumped on that, uh, and thank you to the other supervisors that have been so active in getting that going. Uh, Kevin Hajos has also been one that's been very proactive about putting together safety programs for his employees. Uh, for phasing them back up to work because DPW has been one of those areas where, you know, when the weather gets nice, you got to fix potholes. There's certain things that we got to do. And Kevin's been very good about making sure that that's done safely. So I want to thank him for that. Uh, employment and training uh, has been doing great work uh, all along. This past week, they've made a lot of progress on the Workforce Development Board, which is going to be a critical link to getting people back to work and making sure that our businesses have workers that are trained up and ready to go to work for them. Uh, so thanks to Liza and her colleagues in the other two counties uh, for making those improvements at the Workforce Development Board. Um, DSS staff, uh, they're always the unsung heroes. Uh, it's easier to see 
the daily impact that the nurses and the sheriff's deputies make. Um, uh, and, and Brian LaFleur and his people with the PPE. Uh, but um, DSS uh, uh, caseworkers still have a job to do. There's still people in this community that need them a lot and they're doing a great job of it. And um, maybe we don't say thank you enough and we don't highlight them enough. Uh, so a big thank you to everybody in that department for doing what they do. Uh, Office of Emergency Services, I already mentioned, is a constant struggle in, in terms of getting PPE. Uh, we will never get the amount that we need. Uh, we get a, a subset of that. It, it's, it's been a problem all along. It's, it's not our fault. Uh, I don't know that it's really anybody's fault who could have predicted that we would have been in, in this situation. But Brian's doing his best and Amy is doing her best. Uh, and I think we've had some success stories there. Brian also, uh, I keep telling him not to unload all these trucks by himself, but he's done a, his, his more than his fair share of that. Um, the uh, tourism department, I already mentioned uh, the role that they played on the report, but the tourism department, the planning department through Sarah Frankenfeld and Don Lehman have been like the dynamic trio in terms of getting things out to the public and enhancing what this county does to communicate with the public. That is very much appreciated. Um, I want to echo also Mike Swan. I'm also very proud of Mike's uh, people. Uh, you hear you hear heard him say they do it on time. They also do it by the book. You can always count on the treasurer's office, uh, whether whether it creates smiles or whether it creates agita. You can always count on them to do things by the book and do it right and do it on time. Uh, and uh, the, that kind of study in that office is very much appreciated, uh, and I thank them for it. Um, and that's that's about all I had, unless people have questions. Yeah, thank you, uh, Ryan. Uh, the um, one of my concerns uh, going, I know one of yours as well, going forward is that we have all of these rooms with that. Uh, hopefully, we're going to be renting to some people. But then the question is, how do we feed all of them if our food industry is shut down or largely shut down, and and doesn't. Um, uh, get considered until uh, possibly a phase three. So going forward, if you could um, um, maybe talk to the um, health people about, is it possible to at least uh, accelerate uh, on the food side uh, for perhaps outdoor dining, uh, if properly spaced, as opposed to uh, indoor type dining? Because again, my concern would be that um, even if we get to a phase one here soon, uh, we won't be seeing uh, sit down on the restaurants possibly till sometime mid to late June or even later. And that of course is not only devastating from an economic point of view, but uh, would be um, a, a catastrophe, particularly if some outdoor considerations could be considered. Most of our restaurants, as you might expect, have outdoor decks and or outdoor patios and uh, uh, could probably quickly comply with almost any kind of barrier or spacing ideas. So as if you could kind of take that message with the Department of Health um, and maybe we can get a little more consideration uh, like you did with the uh, car hop uh, idea and the boat hop idea. Uh, every little bit's going to help. Thank you. Yeah, that's a good uh, point, Ron. Uh, the uh They've been doing takeout. Uh, they've been doing it on skeleton staff, um, and we we can certainly figure out how to ramp up takeout. When we did our our survey of vacationers who want to come up here, I think seventy percent of them said that they would be satisfied with takeout, uh, and there was only twenty something percent that said that they wouldn't. That they really hope that they can go inside and sit down. They'll be able to go inside uh, when it's safe to do so. They might not be able to use their HVAC system in these restaurants. You might have to have a lot of fresh air blowing through from the outside. Uh, you might have to have some kind of reduced capacity on the tables, but that's something we're considering. And the car hop idea was a great idea. It came from one of the Lake George businesses. And uh, Dan Baruch and I worked with the State Department of Health to make sure that we can do that safely. They gave their sign off. Uh, so we're going back to the 1950s. I don't know if they're going to use roller skates, but, it, but it'll be fun. <laughs> I'm old enough to remember the uh, roller skate car hops. Thank you. Doug's laughing. Doug, do you have any roller skates you want to lend a hand? Uh, this time, I'm going to take the fifth on the roller skates. <laughs> Anyone else have any questions? 
Okay, uh, report by the uh, county attorney. Good morning, everyone. Um, I don't have a report this month. Thank you. Uh, next, we have reading of communications. We have a letter for the New York State Parks Recreation and Historic Preservation announcing that the Hague Baptist Church is to be considered for nomination to the National and State Registers of Historic Places at their June 11th meeting. And Town of Queensbury Resolution Number 172 of 2020, resolution setting public hearing on proposed local law to amend Chapter 179 zoning of Queensbury Town Code to revise Section 179-4-090 parking and loading regulations and the notice of public hearing concerning same. Uh, reading of resolutions. Resolution numbers 162 through 189 were distributed to the members of the Board of Supervisors and posted to the Warren County website on May 8th. Resolution numbers 190 through 192 were produced after mailing pursuant to action taken at the May 11th joint meeting of the Support Services and Finance Committee. Those resolutions were distributed to the board on May 12th. A motion is needed to bring resolution numbers 190 through 192 to the floor. Uh, motion by Supervisor Simpson. Seconded by... I'll second. Seconded by Supervisor Leggett. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, there are two floor resolutions for your consideration. The first is floor resolution number one, which relates to the food bank challenge. This was distributed to the board and posted to the county website on May 12th. If the board is interested in entertaining this resolution, a motion is needed to bring it to the floor. Okay, uh, we have to wait for rules first. You don't have to for this one because it was mailed on time. Okay. <laughs> motion by Supervisor Driscoll, seconded by Supervisor McGowan. Uh, I'll call the question, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Very good. Okay. And then there is floor resolution number two. This relates to endorsing Glens Falls Hospital's efforts to obtain federal and state reimbursements. This was distributed up to the board and posted to the county website on May 13th. As this did not meet the distribution deadline required in the rules of the board, a motion to waive the rules will be necessary to entertain this matter, as well as another to bring it to the floor. Supervisor Driscoll on a motion to waive the rules, seconded by Supervisor Simpson. I'll call the question on waiving the rules. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And uh, now we need a resolution to bring it to the floor. Again, Supervisor Driscoll and seconded by Supervisor McGowan. I'll call the question on bringing resolution Floor resolution number two to the floor. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, carried. Okay. Floor resolution number one is now resolution number 193. The resolution waiving the rules is resolution 194. And floor resolution number two is now resolution number 195. Thank you. Uh, discussion and public comment. No. We'll do discussion first. Yes, Supervisor Dyer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have a, I'd like to have a discussion on resolution 178 and resolution 186, if that's possible. Okay, uh, we'll take a discussion on resolution 178. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the reason why I bring that resolution up in our packets today, it looks like that we are going to award two contracts for lower improvement for saving for capital projects throughout Warren County. And is this, and we're, we're going to award a bid for two companies and Doing the math, it looks like it's three million two hundred sixty-eight thousand six hundred forty-two dollars. Is that amount reflected totally in resolution 
186, which total, uh, the total projects that we're going to appropriate, $3 million. There seems to be a difference of $267,000. I'm not sure. $268,642. I was just questioning what the difference was. If somebody can answer, I don't know if yeah, Kevin sure is here answer. today or maybe uh, Supervisor Conover. Um, but that's the numbers that I've come up with. I've looked at the total projects that we're going to appropriate. And we're awarding a bid of $3,268,000. I was just curious where this 268642 comes into play. Okay. County Administrator Ryan. Okay, Mr. I believe that the difference is uh, unspent monies from last year's capital projects. Okay, so my question becomes if we're going to, we're going to approve $3 million and we have unspent amount of money of 268, where is that money going to be spent? I, I believe Mr. Hajos is uh, on, on with, with us. Okay. Kevin, are you there? I, I am here. Uh, I, I'm just looking at the numbers. I just want some clarity on that. I understand that they're making money rolling over, but we're awarding a bid, uh, two bids for three million two sixty eight, and our yeah. projects that we're looking to approve later on come to a total of $3 million. I was just curious the difference. Yeah. The difference is, and Ryan had stated it already, their money had carried over from last year that we're awarding two projects. We had three million into budget for last year. Uh, that's That was approved as of the budget time last year, so we have three million dollars. Then we had the rest of the money that rolled over from last year, which was, and I explained it during committee, savings on projects. Uh, we have what we call field change payments in the project, which is a, a contingency in the projects, which Typically, if my my staff watches over these projects, uh, we typically don't have to spend that money. So that's money that we do carry over. But in case there's an unforeseen condition in the field that we don't know about, that money is put in there for that. So uh, for the road projects for this year, we put it out to bid. The bid tabs were part of, I know they're not here, but they were part of the committee meeting. Uh, the bid tabs came in at $4.6 million actually. Uh, we did not award all the projects. We only awarded the projects of what we could with the $3 million we have and what we carried over from last year. So what you're basically explaining to me, you have a contingency built into these contract awards of $268,000 for, for maybe unforeseen uh, changes that may came up. Well, for, it's not just for that. There's savings in the project. We do... Uh, we don't do lump sum projects. We do by item number. We put estimates together for each one of these. If if the contract, let's say I have a hundred, you know, thousand tons of pavement. If he doesn't put down a hundred thousand tons, I'm not paying him for a hundred thousand tons. I only pay him for what he puts down. So that's it. There could be a savings in that. Each one of these projects, we do put probably a 10% contingency in there called the field change payment. And again, it's for unforeseen conditions. Uh, if we need to use it, it's there. If we don't need to use it, then that's what stays in the project and we, and we roll over. But that rollover is just not the contingency. It's savings in projects from contractors not needing to spend or put down a certain amount of payment, whatever it may be. Uh, it's not just the contingency. Okay, so let me rephrase that. That, that money can be used for unexpected un, uh, changes to those projects, which they could go up or go down. That is correct. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion on 178? Okay, I'll declare that closed. Then, uh, any other resolutions for discussion? Chairman. Uh, Supervisor Bramer. Thank you, Chairman Thomas. On 179, I'll just hop to that one before we move off. I, I know that the sheriff uh, has a plan in place for this person to come into play next year. And, you know, I was questioning him a lot during committee um, and on the prior resolution. 
I understand where he's going. I also know that what Treasurer Swan said to us earlier about the loss in sales tax revenue is what has been predicted, you know, a loss of 20 to 30 percent in revenue. This is not surprising. And I know that our budget team or some committee is apparently working on our austerity budget. And I appreciate Supervisor Garrity talking to us about that on Monday. I just urge us to take action as soon as possible to start reducing our expenses uh, where we can and not on the personnel side. I am not going to support layoffs when we have other options to employ and we haven't done that yet. So I'm just expressing my concern about 179 as it relates to employees who we already have on our books. And they, as we've heard numerous times today, they're doing a great job. And so I would urge us again to look at places that where we can reduce expenses. I know Supervisor uh, Beatty is going to be looking at that through his committee. And I would ask us to strenuously take a look at that so that we can avoid any layoffs of our existing employees. Thank you. Uh, further discussion on 179. Yeah. Supervisor Liggett. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. As this was explained, this is to help fill a vacancy due to a patrol officer being called up uh, in reserve duty to, to serve. And it is uh, with anticipation of future retirement of having somebody to replace when that, that happens. And the, the push and pull on this, if you do not have uh, full staff, then others are required to do overtime and overtime expenses in, increase as well. And the sheriff is on uh, line if we need to have any other comment if anybody would like him to, to mind explain. Thank you. I just want to bounce back. Supervisor Leggett, I'm not questioning the yeah. sheriff here on this particular thing. It just makes me very nervous that we are adding an employee for next year, basically, when we're when we're looking at significant cuts in our revenue this year and what that's going to do to us next year. Just want to point that out and make sure that we're really being careful about those hires. And I think the sheriff has done that here. Thank you. Further discussion on 179. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I also participated in the, the process, the committee, uh, the committee meeting that we discussed this particular position. But understanding our financial problems that uh, we're faced with is potentially anywhere from 25 to 30 percent state aid. We know our sales tax. I'm not willing at this time to make a temporary commitment to bring on someone new and then have to face the reality in 2021 that this individual may be, uh, re the numbers may be reduced. I know when we talked at the committee meeting that the uh, sheriff had suggested that he'd like to get the numbers back to where they were uh, in 2009 and 2010. Every police agency within the county is working diligently and providing the best and ultimate service that they can. But realistically, we're going to go through tough times. We don't know what the economy is going to be like, but I hardly think that we're going to get our numbers back to where they were during the good old days. But again, I'm not willing to offer this position temporarily and then have to go back to him and say, you're not going to have a job going forward in 2021. So my, aunt, my vote on this particular resolution would be no. Okay, anyone else on 179? Uh, Supervisor Wild. Chairman, thank you. Um, I, I guess I'd have to just look at it slightly differently. This is a public safety issue. Uh, the sheriff and his team are essential. They're out in the public. They're not necessarily protected by this virus other than their own means to make that happen. And I can't fathom um, having to cut his resources to make this happen. So I'm an absolute supporter of it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, Frank, I'd like to. You know, Supervisor Gary. As, as budget officer, uh, we vetted this position. One of the things we said in our, when we had our discussion on budget positions, 
anything that impacted public safety, the coronavirus, or was absolutely necessary for the county we would go through with. That's why this uh, position will affect public safety. And um, that's why I support it fully. Okay. Uh, I'll declare uh, discussion on 179 closed. Any other resolutions for discussion? The Supervisor Driscoll. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Very quickly, um, Resolution 193. I want to thank uh, all the individuals who um, uh, helped coordinate the Take Five for New York Food Banks. Um, I think it's an excellent uh, uh, opportunity. Uh, I was on the phone with Mark Quas, who is the Executive Director of the Regional Food Bank of Northeastern New York, uh, yesterday morning. Uh, they're located on the Albany Shaker Road in Latham. Um, most of the, most if not all of the uh, food pantries in Warren County uh, are members of the Regional Food Bank. Um, I think it's an excellent idea to support their efforts in kind of a competitive, challenging way uh, for Warren County. I'd also like to point out that uh, many of the local food pantries um, are also in need of um, uh, donations of, of money, donations of, of uh, food and personal care items, as well as volunteers. Uh, it was pointed out in the 113-page um, report that uh, a lot of food pantry providers and individuals from the nonprofit sector um, have a lot of volunteers that are working for them, uh, or volunteering for them. Um, the food pantry in Warrensburg had a, a, a core of about 20 regular volunteers. Each of those individuals has chosen to not volunteer uh, during the last couple of months. Um, so, uh, you know, their, their, uh, their efforts to, uh, to get food out to people is challenged. Uh, so, um, if you have uh, a few extra dollars, if you have uh, a few uh, cans of food or, or personal care items, um, or some time that you can uh, volunteer to your, your local food pantries. I would encourage that uh, participation also. So, thank you. Thank you. All right, Chairman, any other comments on 193? Chairman? Supervisor Bramer? Thank you so much. On 193 about the food bank challenge, I thought Supervisor Driscoll might mention that he and I were both at the food drive, the, the drive through food pantry at the mall um, back at the end of April. And it was very, very well attended by volunteers. It was organized by the Salvation Army. And we had, I think we had over 500 cars come through that day. And I wanted to let everybody know that there is another one. I, uh, Mr. Moore did mention it briefly, but it's on May 22nd, next Friday at the Warren County Fairgrounds. And it will be starting at 11 a.m. for people that need to drive through and um, be given food donations. And also I would encourage all the supervisors to get your mask on and go out and volunteer. You should be there at 9 a.m. to help. Thank you for the announcement. Any other resolutions that anyone would like to discuss? Uh, yes, Mr. Dyer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I apologize. I did mention 186, and I want to go back to that for a minute. Um, we're we're going to award these capital improvements uh, to specific roads throughout the county, and the city's responsibility basically is 90 percent of the total cost. Can I get that? And I support that. I support helping up county in every every way possible, you know, in regards to uh, capital improvements that uh, are necessary to be done, whether it's Bolton, whether it's Fort Manchester. I get that. But my question is, could someone point me in a direction where I could then, where the county itself could reach out and possibly help the city with some paving ongoing in the future? Which committee would I bring that to? Uh, that would be DPW. Okay, thank you so much. More than well. Any other discussion on 186? Uh, any other discussion about resolutions by the supervisors? Uh, Mr. Lehman, do we have any uh, public comment about the resolutions before us today? And they're not staying in there yet for the most part, um, but. Okay. 
I guess it's no. <laughs> Is that a no? That's a no. That's no. Uh, Nothing on the resolution specifically. We do have some comments for later on on issues not related to resolutions. Okay. Uh, with uh, nothing else, uh, vote on resolutions. Well, did, no, I wasn't. Did, can you hear me or no? Yeah. We yes. Can. No, you can't hear. Yes. Yes. Yes, we can. Yes, we hear you. <laughs> All right, resolution 162, making supplemental appropriations. Mr. Beatty? Yes. Ms. Shuffler? Yes. Mr. Garrity? Yes. Mr. Conover? Yes. Mr. Leggett? Yes. Mr. Diamond? Yes. Mr. McDevitt? Yes. Ms. Bramer? Yes. Mr. Bruno? Yes. Mr. Driscoll? Yes. Mrs. Frazier? Yes. Mr. Simpson? Yes. Ms. Hogan? Yes. Mr. Simpson? Mr. Dickinson? Yes. Mr. Molino? Yes. Mr. Straub? Yes. Mr. Wild? Mr. Wild? Yes. Thank you. Mr. McGowan? Yes. Ms. Siever? Yes. Chairman Thomas? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 163, amending Warren County budget. Mr. Beatty? Yes. Ms. Scheffler? Yes. Mr. Garrity? Yes. Mr. Conover? Yes. Mr. Leggett? Yes. Mr. Diamond? Yes. Mr. McDevitt? Yes. Ms. Bramer? Yes. Mr. Bruno? Yes. Mr. Driscoll? Yes. Mrs. Frazier? Yes. Mr. Simpson? Yes. Ms. Hogan? Yes. Mr. Dickinson? Yes. Mr. Merlino? Yes. Mr. Straub? Yes. Mr. Wild? Yes. Mr. McGowan? Yes. Ms. Sieber? Yes. Chairman Thomas? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 179, amending table of organization. Mr. Beatty? Yes. Ms. Shepler? Yes. Mr. Garrity? Yes. Mr. Conover? Yes. Mr. Leggett? Yes. Mr. Diamond? No. Mr. McDevitt? Yes. Ms. Bramer? Yes. Mr. Bruno? Yes. Mr. Driscoll? Yes. Mrs. Frazier? Yes. Mr. Simpson? Yes. Ms. Hogan? Ms. Hogan? Yes. Mr. Dickinson? Yes. He said no. He said you're clear. Mr. Merlino? Yes. Mr. Straub? Yes. Mr. Wild? Yes. Mr. McGowan? Yes. Ms. Sieber? Yes. Chairman Thomas? Yes. Resolution 179 passes. Resolution 180, authorizing acceptance of settlement for a resident at Westmount Health Facility. Mr. Beatty? Yes. Ms. Shepler? Yes. Mr. Garrity? Yes. Mr. Conover? Yes. Mr. Leggett? Yes. Mr. Diamond? Yes. Mr. McDevitt? Yes. Ms. Bramer? Yes. Mr. Bruno? Yes. Mr. Driscoll? Yes. Mrs. Frazier? Yes. Mr. Simpson? Yes. Ms. Hogan? Yes. Mr. Dickinson? Yes. Mr. Merlino? Yes. Mr. Straub? Yes. Mr. Wild? Yes. Mr. McGowan? Yes. Ms. Sieber? Yes. Chairman Thomas? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 181, authorizing the county treasurer to write, out, write off uncollected debt for D&G recycling. Mr. Beatty? Yes. Ms. Scheffler? Yes. Mr. Garrity? Yes. Mr. Conover? Yes. Mr. Leggett? Yes. Mr. Diamond? Yes. Mr. McDevitt? Yes. Ms. Bramer? Yes. 
Mr. Bruno? Yes. Mr. Driscoll? Yes. Mrs. Frazier? Yes. Mr. Simpson? Yes. Ms. Hogan? Yes. Mr. Dickinson? Yes. Mr. Merlino? Yes. Mr. Stroud? Yes. Mr. Weil? Yes. Mr. McGowan? Yes. Ms. Sieber? Yes. Chairman Thomas? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution number 186, establishing 2020 road project, uh, road fund projects. Mr. Beatty? Yes. Ms. Scheffler? Yes. Mr. Garrity? Yes. Mr. Conover? Yes. Mr. Leggett? Yes. Mr. Diamond? Yes. Mr. McDevitt? Yes. Ms. Bramer? Yes. Mr. Bruno? Yes. Mr. Driscoll? Yes. Mrs. Frazier? Yes. Mr. Simpson? Yes. Ms. Hogan? Yes. Mr. Dickinson? Yes. Mr. Rolino? Yes. Mr. Straub? Yes. Mr. Wild? Yes. Mr. McGowan? Yes. Ms. Sieber? Yes. Chairman Thomas? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 187, um, authorizing appropriation of funds for the computer reserve fund. Mr. Beatty? Yes. Ms. Shuffler? Yes. Mr. Garrity? Yes. Mr. Conover? Yes. Mr. Leggett? Yes. Mr. Diamond? No. Mr. McDevitt? Yes. Yes. Ms. Bramer? Yes. Mr. Bruno? Yes. Mr. Driscoll? Yes. Mrs. Frazier? Yes. Mr. Simpson? Yes. Ms. Hogan? Yes. Mr. Dickinson? Yes. Mr. Rolino? Yes. Mr. Strau? Yes. Mr. Wild? Yes. Mr. McGowan? Yes. Ms. Sieber? Yes. Chairman Thomas? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution number 188, authorizing appropriation of funds from deferred revenues to the Office for the Aging Budget. Mr. Beatty? Yes. Ms. Shuffler? Yes. Mr. Garrity? Yes. Mr. Conover? Yes. Mr. Leggett? Yes. Mr. Diamond? Yes. Mr. McDevitt? Yes. Ms. Bramer? Yes. Mr. Bruno? Yes. Mr. Driscoll? Yes. Mrs. Frazier? Yes. Mr. Simpson? Yes. Ms. Hogan? Yes. Mr. Dickinson? Good. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Merlino? Yes. Mr. Strau? Yes. Mr. Wild? Yes. Mr. McGowan? Yes. Ms. Sieber? Yes. Chairman Thomas? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 189, authorizing the appropriation of funds from deferred, deferred revenue gaslight village parking fees to Charles R. Wood Park and authorizing reimbursements to the village of Lake George. Mr. Beatty? Uh, yes. Ms. Sheffler? Yes. Mr. Garrity? Yes. Mr. Conover? Yes. Mr. Leggett? Yes. Mr. Diamond? Yes. Mr. McDevitt? Yes. Ms. Bramer? Yes. Mr. Bruno? Yes. Mr. Driscoll? Yes. Mrs. Frazier? Yes. Mr. Simpson? Yes. Ms. Hogan? Yes. Mr. Dickinson? Yes. Mr. Merlino? Yes. Mr. Strau? Yes. Mr. Wild? Yes. Mr. McGowan? Yes. Ms. Sieber? Yes. Chairman Thomas? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution number 191, making supplemental appropriations. Mr. Beatty? Yes. Ms. Scheffler? Yes. Mr. Garrity? Yes. Mr. Conover? Yes. Mr. Leggett? Yes. Mr. Diamond? Yes. Mr. McDevitt? Yes. Ms. Bramer? Yes. Mr. Bruno? Yes. Mr. Driscoll? Yes. Mrs. Frazier? Yes. Mr. Simpson? Yes. Ms. Hogan? Mr. Dickinson? Yes. Mr. Merlino? Yes. Mr. Strau? Yes. Mr. Wild? Yes. Mr. McGowan? Yes. Ms. Sieber? Yes. Chairman Thomas? Yes. Resolution passes. 
Resolution number 192, amending Warren County budget for 2020. Mr. Beatty? Yes. Ms. Shepler? Yes. Mr. Garrity? Yes. Mr. Conover? Yes. Mr. Leggett? Yes. Mr. Diamond? Yes. Mr. McDevitt? Yes. Ms. Bramer? Yes. Mr. Bruno? Yes. Mr. Driscoll? Yes. Mrs. Frazier? Yes. Mr. Simpson? Yes. Ms. Hogan? Yes. Mr. Dickinson? Yes. Mr. Merlino? Yes. Mr. Stroud? Yes. Mr. Wild? Yes. Mr. McGowan? Yes. Ms. Sieber? Yes. Chairman Thomas? Yes. Resolution passes. We need collective on the rest. Uh, collective on the remaining resolutions. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Uh, uh, next, we have privilege of the floor and public comment. Uh, we do have a couple of uh, questions, some public comment. Uh, one question was from a woman through Facebook, uh, name of Cassie, who asked, uh, bear with me while I read this. There are non-essential businesses that have remained open and are not following state protocol and have risked workers and customers' health out of greed and nothing is being done about it. Who should we who should be responsible for enforcement action? Uh, the, the enforcement action falls to the local government, which would be the, uh, the county. So uh, either building codes, public health, or the sheriff's department. That's okay. Uh, there's uh, some other, there's a uh, comment here from someone advocating for better internet service in underserved areas. Uh, we also have numerous uh, things, uh, numerous people congratulating Jack for his uh, earlier presentation. And that's it. That's it. Wait a minute, Don, that's not everything on the comment block. Sorry, Chairman. <laughs> Well, a lot of it is topics that would not be brought up at this meeting. I mean, if you want me to read everything on here, I can I can read everything on here. To, you know, I think the topics should be relevant to the meeting. I mean, we wouldn't allow people to talk about these at a meeting necessarily. I mean, could I'm just going to read this one at the top. Could faulty PPE from manufacturers be a possibility of promoting the spread of COVID-19? Are shipments of PPE being tested for validity? Uh, sorry, I'm not suggesting that we have the answer, but I don't know why we would limit what people can say to us. We usually don't do that. Oh, we, I can, I can, I can read everything that. on here if you'd like. No. What, what did they say? I didn't hear what. Uh, what was the question? It's the testing of PPE for validity, I guess. I can offer an answer on that if you'd like. Sure. The PPE that we get here has already been validated by the state of New York because it goes through their warehouse first and it has to be checked and then it comes uh, to us. So as far as us having to worry about it, that's not the case. The issue is, and we've had some um, agencies um, within our, let's say the capital region that have been caught up in this, and you can tell very easily that it's something that you probably shouldn't buy when they ask you for the money up front. And then when you get the product, it uh, is not what you expected or does not meet the requirements. Um, unfortunately, everybody has been in a boat trying desperately to get the PPE that they need. And they've uh, sometimes probably made purchases that they normally would not. But as far as the stuff that we get here, we are not buying stuff uh, on the open market. We are getting our stuff from the state of New York, which has been validated. Thank you. Okay, if we wanna go through the rest of the thread here. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Supervisor General. Yeah, um, it, it, it would seem to me that um, 
if somebody were standing at the podium and asked the question, we may or may not have a department head present. We may or may not have the materials, the relevant materials in front of us, et cetera. It would seem to me in this age of the coronavirus and, and the Zoom that uh, all the questions uh, after the meeting that we don't take up here today uh, be um, transmitted to the appropriate department head for a response to the person asking the question. Uh, but that would be my recommendation. Otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to turn this meeting into a committee meeting or 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 a questions that could be uh, provided to uh, the appropriate department. And so there's going to need to be some jurying going on, which is what I think Mr. Lehman is attempting to do here. Otherwise, I, the, the meeting I fear could fall. I mean, we could get 50 questions. We could get 100 questions. Uh, we're not we're not structured for that. It doesn't seem to me, but. That's just my two cents for whatever it's worth. That's a very good suggestion. Uh, I, I don't disagree with what you're saying. Uh, Supervisor Sieber. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think while Supervisor Conover may raise some valid points about procedure and policy as it relates to our public comment in these unprecedented times, I also think that both our you know, public relations officer as well as uh, what Supervisor Bramer is bringing up is important. What we have told our residents is please watch on YouTube Live. If you have a comment, you know, up until today, we it was even educating and sharing with people about having to log in and create a username to make a comment. There are some very valid comments. There are feelings and concern and frustration out there. Um, I would encourage every supervisor to read all the comments on the YouTube Live posting. Uh, but I also hope that we retain those comments. I know sometimes when we transfer them over so that the feed is still available, it's important that those get retained. Um, but Don is fielding calls and emails and texts during the entire meeting from people on Facebook, on Twitter, on email, on cell, on um, YouTube Live. So to the extent uh, that there are questions, and I, I think that was really helpful what Brian LaFleur was just able to add um, as well for, for the top of the feed. It is difficult for all of us, I think, to keep up with two, three, four screens and address those, but we are doing an incredible job. There are so many other counties that are struggling with public participation. So I would say I'd prefer not to limit that participation. We have over 40 people or 29 that are watching right now, plus many other people at Lipson. To me, the more people that we're able to get our information out to, the better. So maybe it's just a matter of developing some procedures if, in fact, this becomes our new normal. Thank you, Supervisor Seaver. I, I think it's. I think we're going to have to stick to, uh, as far as the board meeting, maybe stick to what specific questions. I think if we start getting, you know, with all the comments, we're going to be here for quite a long time. I do think. I do agree with Supervisor Seaver that the comments should be retained, and uh, anyone that wants to uh, to look at look at them or look into them further, by all means, they should do that. Uh, Thank you. That, that's my opinion. Uh, Supervisor Diamond. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Not to change the subject, but the briefing that we had about the status of our community and our region was very informed that uh, Supervisor Wilder's team held. But what I'd ask that, um, you know, that you open up maybe a half an hour, or 50 minutes, half an hour after the briefing for supervisors' questions uh, and any public questions. Um, so we have ample time to understand the presentation and ask those questions. So thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I can respond. Supervisor Wild. Thank you. Uh, Jack, thank you. I appreciate that. I will do my best to make that happen. Uh, at the same time, anyone can reach out to me with emails or phone calls. Uh, right now, I still have a little bandwidth that I can try to get them the answers to in terms of the plans that we're putting together. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay. Uh, announcements. Uh, I would like to uh, have a couple. In your packet is the uh, Foster Care Awareness Month. There's a proclamation uh, to that effect. I just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. And also, uh, uh, 
the week of May 10th through the 16th is uh, Nursing Home Week. Uh, what's happening in our nursing homes, I, I feel, is, anyhow, enough said. Anyone else with announcements? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll, I'll try to be brief. Uh, a number of us have, have heard from uh, uh, constituents about individuals uh, choosing not to wear masks, um, possibly um, uh, not following uh, the guidelines and protocols. Uh, this past week, um, a church in, in my ward, uh, someone dropped a dime on, on a, an activity that they were participating in. Um, it was found that they were they were in compliance. They, they were able to uh, distribute uh, food to the public. Um, I um, actually I, I compliment the individual who brought the dime and and, uh, and had it investigated. Uh, they were looking out for their friends and neighbors. Um, I also compliment the uh, the church for continuing that that activity, reaching out to the, the public in need. Um, I also received a, a phone call. Uh, from an individual I've had a uh, relationship with for a number of years, um, who was on the um, mandatory quarantine uh, list, and uh, gets a phone call, nice phone call from uh, Janelle Jones and, and uh, her team every day. Also gets a visit uh, from the Warren County Sheriff's Department, uh, uh, who uh, parked their vehicle right in front of uh, his home. Uh, certainly has some concerns um, about civil liberties and, and all of those types of things. Um, uh, being called out uh, essentially uh, as an innocent victim who, um, who caught uh, the virus uh, from a family member. Um, I explained to him that both uh, parties were doing their jobs. Um, I, I agreed with him that uh, no one wants uh, a police or a sheriff's uh, uh, vehicle parked in front of their uh, their house, certainly not on a daily basis for a few week uh, period. Um, but I didn't see any alternative to uh, to those departments doing their jobs. Uh, they're doing it uh, for the uh, public safety and, and health of, of all of us. Uh, so uh, I, I agree with them. It's, it's certainly... And in position, uh, it's something that, that I hope none of us have to uh, experience. Uh, but uh, I think we have a duty and responsibility for at least being very civil to individuals who um, might be putting uh, each of us in harm's way to, to just ask them lightly, um, you know, uh, can you get a, a mask? Or I know a place where you can pick one up in your, your neighborhood. Um, uh, and encourage them to, uh, to wear it, uh, uh, especially when they're in some type of crowded area. Uh, I think that's a responsibility, um, and especially as we're getting into uh, uh, the seasonal months, um, you know, to find a way for our uh, guests and visitors uh, uh, to help keep them safe, but all of the uh, residents of Warren County safe also. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Supervisor Beatty. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a couple uh, uh, announcements or points. Um, Queensbury is doing a phenomenal job in filling out the census report. We're, we're way ahead of the county average, we'll, we'll, and we are way ahead of the national average. And I and I just implore the rest of the county to uh, uh, towns to try to catch up. Grants Falls is doing a good job too, but uh, it's so vital that we get our fair share of federal and state dollars, uh, and we won't do that if they don't know how many people are living in our county. So um, kudos to Glens Falls and Queensbury, and I just hope the other towns uh, jump up on that. Uh, also, uh, um, the fact that uh, Queensbury now will be filling, fulfilling the uh, fourth ward seat that's currently open with the uh, resignation of Ms. Switzer. Um, I hope those uh, interviews will be uh, open so that uh, all county or all town residents can see uh, and hear what questions and the responses from the people that are interested in fulfilling the open seat by Ms. Switzer. Uh, it's imperative that the citizens get a chance to actually see who's going to fill that in 
and hear their responses. Uh, so I, uh, I hope that's going to occur and hopefully it doesn't occur behind closed doors, which to, in, in, in my opinion is a lack of transparency and is actually disturbing. So I'm sure that won't happen. I'm sure it'll be out in the open and I look forward to that. And finally, uh, just a, a, a little update. Uh, uh, Supervisor Sieber, McGowan, and myself, uh, we all got a thousand masks. We are devised a game plan to get them out in the most efficient way possible uh, and follow the state directives. Uh, and there'll be individual masks with uh, actual labels on them uh, with the uh, county website and so forth. And uh, 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 we will keep everybody in tune with that, but we're going to get them to the seniors, the small convenience stores, to the restaurants. So that the people who do go into some of these places that don't have masks, these establishments will have the ability to get masks to the people who don't have them and to ensure the public safety. So uh, uh, it's a very tedious thing, very hours consuming for uh, Mr. McGowan, Ms. Uh, Seaver and myself, but uh, we feel it's well worth the effort. So that's it for me. And uh, you did a great job, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I'm, uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Very good job. Uh, any announcement, uh, Supervisor Gary? Yes. Well, I'd like to say, well, I applaud what Mr. Uh, Ms. Siever, Mr. McGowan, and Mr. Bate have been doing. We in the town of Orangeburg have been doing it since the first time we uh, got the mask uh, two weeks ago, and we just got another supply of a thousand more masks. And we uh, welcome anybody to come up to Orangeburg, and we will give them masks. Uh, all they got to do is knock on our door towards the Cumberland Farms, and uh, we're on our second thousand. So as long as uh, we're counting what we've done, we've been doing it since day one, and uh, we appreciate it. And we do appreciate the people wearing a mask. It is difficult at times to go in so many convenience stores and see people in there without the mask. But if anybody needs a mask, and if you run low, uh, please come up to our town hall in Orangeburg. We're there every day, uh, Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 3 3 p.m. and we'll try to accommodate them. Uh, we prefer that you call ahead, but if you can't, just wrap real hard on the door and we'll open it up. Thank you. Supervisor Well. Chairman, thank you. I'm not going to talk about masks. Um, I, I'm kind of busy and I, I trust Supervisor Strau. But what I did want to do is expand upon what um, Administrator Moore mentioned. There's a lot of people that are involved with the task force and our reopening strategies and work, and there's dozens of them, and it's impossible to thank them all, uh, but I'm just going to take this opportunity to do that and thank them as a group, and I look forward to continuing working with them. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ralph, Mr. Moore? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I wanted to just say uh, I'm going to send out a link to a WNYT story about the individual I, I reported this morning who had been on the ventilator since virtually the beginning and he got the plasma transfusion. Mm -hmm. Not only is it a, a great uh, happy story, but it's a significant story uh, from the perspective that this man uh, is one of our own. He was one of the first in the country to have a successful plasma transfusion and Glens Falls Hospital was one of the first institutions in the country to successfully do that. Uh, it's a major, major success. It's a really uh, a great story, and I hope you all check out the link. I'll email it right now. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, Supervisor Sieber. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and thanks for seeing that little electronic blue hand. Um, I, you know, Kevin Garrity is absolutely right. At the towns, they have been handing out masks and reaching the public for many weeks, thanks to the um, coordination and donations from the state and uh, OES. But, you know, not all supervisors had that opportunity until this week. So it was absolutely wonderful to see that type of teamwork and that type of effort to include the other half of the board, which of course are at large and ward representatives in all of the mass distributions and hand sanitizers. And I see your hand too, Matt, I'm sorry. I promise I'll be quick. Um, <laughs> that I am um, really excited that we found a creative way. So I just wanna take the opportunity. I know it's time consuming, but 
to the point that if anyone's out there watching and they are um, listening and they shop for Instacart, we are really trying to find those shoppers to get those right to the people at home that aren't able to get out and get to a drive-by pickup. But Kevin, thanks for offering extra masks up in Warrensburg because I know we have residents calling the town hall and calling all over looking for masks. And uh, hopefully Dom was gonna look in and see maybe we can do a sticker decorating contest or something <laughs> on so thank you, thank you, thank you. Matt, sorry, I'm done. Supervisor Simpson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to take a moment and thank uh, Superintendent Hajos, uh, uh, Supervisor Garrity, uh, Administrator Moore, and yourself for um, you know uh, getting through this process very quickly on the food pantry drive-through. I was in Washington County and uh, ran into Leo Lloyd, and we worked out a plan to uh, locate this in Warren County at the Warren County Fairgrounds, and we needed a commitment within a half hour. And I just want to thank you for being able to react that quickly, and also for Kevin Hajos offering the, the um, expertise of all of his people and equipment to make that happen. So thank you very much. That is going to be 11 a.m. on Friday, May 22nd, and we'll also need volunteers. I'm sure that my colleagues would be more than happy to uh, get in touch with me and we'll make that happen. It's a great time. I was there all day uh, last week and it's amazing how much need there is out in there in our community. And uh, these people do it right, it's great. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Supervisor Strong. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, two things. One is this is the first time learning of any masks being given out because we're almost out here at the town of Queensbury. We do get a steady stream of people asking for masks and we have allocated those masks. We're almost empty. I wanna thank uh, Supervisor Garrity for sharing some of those with the town of Queensbury. Um, and, uh, um, that's the only individual that's offered to share them with the town of Queensbury. So um, I look forward to when the shipment comes in, I was told it wasn't in yet, uh, of getting masks to be able to give out to the residents of the town of Queensbury. And the second note is the note about interviewing potential candidates for the yes, fourth ward, which is not a county issue, yeah, okay? It's a town issue. Just let me assure you that whatever we do uh, in, in terms of interviewing candidates will be in the best interests of the residents of the town of Queensbury and be entirely legal too. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? I, I apologize for my emotions. Uh, I, I would just like to offer my uh, condolences uh, to the folks that have uh, passed away in the nursing homes and uh, recognize the nursing homes that uh, what's happening there is, is very tragic. I, I think hopefully this will be a, uh, you know, if you could say such a thing, a, a silver lining coming out of this that uh, ourselves in the, in the state and everybody else will pay a lot more attention uh, to these facilities and these people that are in these homes. So, uh, with that, a motion to adjourn. Moved by Supervisor Garrity, seconded by Supervisor Dickinson. Uh, we are adjourned. The following program is underwritten by the generous support of Associates of Glens Falls and Loomis and LaPan Insurance. Since 1852, they have been assisting both businesses and individuals across the country secure the most comprehensive insurance products available. Associates of Glens Falls and Loomis and LaPan are one of New York's largest independently owned insurance agencies. Public affairs programming on Look TV is underwritten by the generous support of Pennell's Restaurant, classic Italian-American food since 1922, and Store Tech, technology solutions for computers, networks, and phone. Store Tech, your technology, our passion. 1922, Babe Ruth debuts with the Yankees. WGY signs on air. Exterminator wins the Saratoga Cup, and Pennell's Restaurant opens its doors for the very first time. For five generations, Pennell's has been preparing delicious Italian food, served in a comfortable, home-like setting where everyone is welcomed. 90 years of authentic Italian recipes, 90 years of the freshest ingredients, and 90 years of the finest classic Italian dishes, all made daily by hand. Pennell's Italian Restaurant, a Saratoga dining tradition since 1922. Most cybersecurity firms deal only with prevention, the systems that block hackers and viruses. 
Stored Tech knows the root cause is actually good people doing bad things. So we offer a security training program which includes certifying all participants to show they understand the basics. Technology solutions for computers, networks, and phones. Stored Tech, your technology, our passion.